Hey guys, this is Randy from Trinidad, Colorado. I'm excited to introduce to you Chaz Rab of the Trial by Error Variety Show podcast. Enjoy. Thank you, Randy. Randy's a uh, you know, long-time listener. She's a loyal listener of the podcast. She's also a really good friend of mine, and they just moved up to Trinidad, Colorado, and we miss them like hell down here in Texas. So thanks for being a part of the podcast. Really cool. Any of my friends, anybody really that listens to the podcast, you want to be a part of this, let me know. I'll, I'll find a way for you to be on the show. Welcome back, everybody, to season two of the show. The podcast featuring local and unsigned bands from all over the world. And this episode here is a super packed one. Not so much music, but just interviews. I, I was able to talk to a lot of really fun people from San Marcos, Texas. The first one is Chief in the Doomsday Device. He's a performer from San Marcos. He's a Texas native, and he is writing some incredible hip-hop. The music you're going to hear is available on Bandcamp. The first song is called New Zulu Zandu. And then we're going to hear from him. We're going to talk to Walker Wade. Some guys uh, you've, you've never heard of are definitely going to be on this podcast. Uh, this is their introduction, I guess. JC Fury, Brother Wives, Winter Fires. Some of these bands don't have recordings. And some of them didn't have the time to sit and record anything with me that night. I'm still going to put the interview in here, and then whenever they do get recordings, I've invited them to come back for a full feature, and in the meantime, get to know them on a personal level here in this podcast. <laughs> okay, everybody. Enjoy the show. I just... Catatonic state. 
merciful wait for the meat. Maybe I'll speak on their behalf. Yeah, you may laugh, cause you did not do your math. It's the news of the news and do just for you. It's the news of the news and do just for you. It's the news of the news and do just for you. It's the news of the news and do just for you. All right, cool. Well, uh, we're sitting here in the car right now on the mobile trial by air studios. <laughs> talking to chief and the doomsday device actually i'm just talking to chief he left the doomsday device it's, somewhere else it's in the it's in the vehicle it'll be yeah. with us shortly okay all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right man so tell me tell me where your substance is where do you draw your inspiration you were telling me a little bit off mic you uh you're a movie buff does that inspire some where you're at it does yeah um i think my approach to hip-hop is there's a lot of obvious things that you hear in hip-hop so i want to try to add what I'm not hearing, you know, whether that be bringing from a different bank of samples, you know, drawing more from like punk and progressive rock and things like that, or whether it be, a, you know, using a frame of reference like movies or literature more so than like a street commentary, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of just trying to bring different things to the traditional hip hop forms. You know? There are things that kind of connect us all, and I feel like hip hop is a easy vehicle for connection in the sense that, despite what Radio Head says, not everyone can play guitar. So. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but yeah, almost <laughs> anybody with a computer these days can become a producer. You know, so. Yeah, almost. I I, I struggle with it. I <laughs> sit down and I try to make a beat, and I just I don't. Like, I guess I'm not doing the format stuff, and I'm, I'm doing it piece by piece. I don't know how to just lay a loop down. <laughs> I think what you got to do is just make, like, a hundred bad beats, yeah. man. And then, like, it'll click one time. You know, oh, you'll man. make that one, and you're like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. why, why didn't I do this? You know? <laughs> 98 to go. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> yeah, you just make a... That's what happened to me, man. I made a bunch of horrible beats before mm -hmm. I started making things that I actually felt could stand up to the test of time you know uh you were talking about your uh punk influences progressive rock i just finished the no effects book oh word uh, yeah. the hepatitis bathtub mm -hmm. and uh very inspiring like it started out very <laughs> fucked up <laughs> I bet. Uh, yeah those are some wild guys but they huh? grew into great adults uh yeah that, that was the california side of things right? yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah that was yeah punk uh Took, I guess that's how it works with all culture, though, where it's like the New York side and then the California side brings this whole new set of influences mm -hmm. and opportunities and possibilities. Well, I got out of it really is like those dudes took like 12 years to become good, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they didn't stop. Like they, I mean, the way they went on tour wasn't exactly honest. Like they stole parts from other vehicles to fix theirs <laughs> yeah. or they siphoned gas to get yeah. gas or that kind of thing. But you do what you got to do. But they did. Yeah. yeah. And they started from 50 shows. The next album was 100 shows. The next one was, a, you know, 200 and so on. It just seemed to double every time. Yeah, there was a, I would say their equivalent would probably be the Roots as yeah. far as hip hop goes. I love a, the Roots. Yeah. And those guys were like literally, I remember when they were the hip hop band first and foremost they were mm -hmm. a band but then they were the only ones that were touring like 200 something days out the year yeah and then it was like 250 with a full band full band yeah and it <laughs> turned out they were like right up there with the rolling stones in terms of like dates booked mm -hmm. you know man but, i didn't know that about them I, yeah. I mean i saw them at bonnaroo on the main stage of bonnaroo nice yeah they earned yeah I, i've seen them like easily 13 14 wow. times and I've, since 98 since the uh, Illidelph Half-Life, that was the first time I saw them. Man. And then I made it a point to see them every time they came to the Austin area for yeah. many, many years. Are they still touring? Um, they Well, with the Jimmy Fallon thing, they've been kind of locked in. That's TV. what I was wondering, how they do. They tour a little bit, but they've had like other opportunities. It's been interesting watching them evolve, mm -hmm. but uh, I think they might be coming up to a contract year pretty soon. So Yeah, I, I, I always wondered about how it feels to be... I mean, I guess they've toured a lot, obviously, oh, yeah. but they, how it feels they, to just be locked into wearing suits every night <laughs> and playing whatever the fuck Jimmy Fallon tells them to play, or you know. Yeah, I mean, it kind of seems like they're doing it on their own terms, mm -hmm. which is the dream situation, you know. Yeah, they look like I they're mean, having a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you can't cuss, but they yeah. can do pretty much anything else that yeah. they want to do. 
That's really cool. I like that dynamic. It is definitely refreshing to see a really badass band on a late night show. Mm-hmm. You know, because Jimmy Fallon, he's pretty squeaky clean, but when you know the Roots history, you're like, all right, he hangs out with some cool folks. Yeah, so. <laughs> you can tell that when he when he gets the chance, he gives mm-hmm. people like props. You know yeah. that they deserve. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what sort of influences do you have growing up as far as musically? Like, uh, what were you super into? Man, uh, well, I guess growing up with parents that were child children of the 60s and 70s, there's always going to be the Parliament Funkadelic mm-hmm. influence there. Um, my hip-hop influences would probably be De La Soul and Public Enemy yeah. most directly, and then Del the Funky Homo Sapien mm-hmm. and High Row is a big influence. I uh, really like what gorillas do in the sense of like their multimedia approach and mm-hmm. how everything is fair game. And then a bunch of random old school bands I like, man, a bunch of old rock and from like the 60s to 70s. I like. Yeah, so a little bit of everything. A little yeah. bit of everything, yeah. Not really stuck in one, which I'm really excited about hearing your set, just knowing uh, you know what influences you to write that. Um, but I, it always piques my interest to see how people got to this point uh you know growing up because it was like pretty much what you listened to as a kid was what your parents allowed you to listen to or what mm-hmm. you know so i mean and and, and that could turn you too because like my parents they listened to mostly just christian music huh. and so any chance i got to get a Marilyn manson cd or offspring or whatever i'm like oh this is Man. it and yeah that's <laughs> I, I hear about people like that and i forget that sometimes it can be that kind of situation mm-hmm. like my folks had a huge record collection, so the whole thing in our house was sort of everything is worth at least giving one listen, you know? Yeah. So there were, I remember my mom throwing away a Guns N' Roses tape, but it was because <laughs> it had a naked lady in the yeah. middle, you know? But yeah. otherwise, they didn't really care what I was listening to as long as it wasn't, like, clearly evil. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, I it's That's a, a line that they have to draw, too. They, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess clearly evil would be like the Antichrist superstar. Yeah, fair enough. But I mean, yeah, I remember them doing things like, like they were cool enough to understand the significance of mm-hmm. musical things. Like I remember them buying Band in the USA by Two Live Crew mm-hmm. because of the whole freedom of speech and going to Supreme Court or yeah. buying the Body Count album for the same reason. You know, because yeah. Cop Killer was going to get pulled off shelves. Yeah, they're like, we should have a copy of this historical. Before. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they. Even more so than just appreciating music for good music, they understood like the significance of music and history. And are they still around? They are still around. Awesome. Yeah, Very yeah. cool. All right. Check out another song. This one is called Seven of Nine or Hand Grenades off of the Slight Return album by Chief and the Doomsday Device. Hope you guys are enjoying the interview. We got a little bit more after this, and then we're going to go on to Walker Waite. <laughs> The genuine intervention, the populous bonds of a divine nature, patterns that shine brighter later. North Star guidance that alleviates the need for hiding, but probably it'll be alright if I keep it locked up tight throughout the night until morning comes with all of its glory in tow. Back to commanders to help the folks grow that refuse to let go of that self imposed dank of mentality. Gradually missing life, actually stranded in a fantasy land that they planned out. Stand out of reach whenever you put a hand out. I am not Mr. Fantastic, so it isn't that drastic that I can't save you. Basically, I'll play through because my chemistry states if I stand still, it puts us at jeopardy. Nobody's super. My body's made a hand grenade. 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 When they hung me out to dry, I proved that I'd fly away towards glory and rewrite my story in multiple perspectives at the same time. First and third person conversation held in a divine tongue. Sung to the listening wind because it listened before, so I know that it'll listen again. And it never has an agenda, or never runs game like Enda. 
or says return to sender. Nothing but a healthy convection. Plugged in without an objection. It's feeling like an astral projection manifested in the flesh. Protection of a suggestion. Phantoms with futuristic data for a complex matter that we declassify with pride. Those who are truly alive have nothing to hide. So watch destiny and I collide. Nobody shoot me. My body's made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body's made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body's made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body's made a hand grenade. Yes, it is true that I am ballistic. One false move means it's into the mystic. When in the blast radius, not suicide because it's not painless. Even if you're classified as brainless. Hopeless is a penny with a hole in it and holding it to emulate a puppet on a string. Schizophrenic personality makes a one man wingman fantasy more than a reality. Maybe something like a lucid dream come true. More parallax blues for the parallax view. I can never sacrifice dignity for destiny. Some suckers try to test me by standardized, forcing me to focus with these wandering eyes, recognizing all the four. And elements and lies with strange mercy and familiarity. Detonate as I embrace the solidarity. Nobody shoot me. My body made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body made a hand grenade. Nobody shoot me. My body made a hand grenade. How long have you lived in Texas? Uh, born and raised. Oh, uh, awesome. Me yeah, too. Born in Austin, raised in Austin. Cool came to San Marcos to go to Southwest Texas before it became Texas State. Mm-hmm. I yeah. remember those days. Yeah, man. And this this town is, you know, it's an art, artist town. Mm-hmm. It's a real creative town. And so I've always found it really inspiring and just yeah. decided to stick around and make it home base. You know? And they're keeping you busy. You got three shows yeah, tonight. Yeah, I do, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to tour in the square tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the square tour. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. we're going to make sure that we hit as many points as we can. We're not hitting all four sides, but mm-hmm. we're really hitting two sides hard. Yeah, it's going to be a good New Year's Eve. There's, I think so. I'm gonna, after this, I'm going to head into Austin and go to the Spider Ballroom, Spider oh, House. Spider House is a cool spot. I interviewed a couple of bands uh, this last month that are both on the bill. Who's uh, playing the Spider House? Uh, the bands I know are Poly Action mm-hmm. and Rotten Mangoes. Okay. And um, there's another band there, um, uh, Ghost Wolves, that I'm interested in seeing. Oh, yeah, I think that's a uh, Carly Wolf. and that's a, Yeah, Ghost Wolves, if they're who I think they are, are really cool. I saw they, they were one of the suggested people on Instagram, and they take some pretty rad photos of live shows. So I'm like, all right, I got to yeah. go check that out. I, yeah. I, I take photos as well. So. Awesome, same here, man. Oh, awesome, man. What yeah. do you shoot with? Um, I have a Canon Re- Rebel. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the most amazing. No, I got thing, a Rebel T4. Yeah, yeah, I really dig my Rebel, though. And then I do a lot of iPhone photography, too. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, that's good for moments. Mm-hmm. I can usually, between iPhone and Instagram filter. I try to make them filterless, but mm-hmm. every once in a while I throw an inkwell, get a black and white going. Well, another pro- good program that's free for your phone is uh, Lightroom. I have seen Lightroom. I've got a... I'm, I'm an Adobe guy. I'm a yeah. design guy, too. Well, there you go. I like a little bit of everything. Well, it's free yeah. on your phone. It's like 15 bucks on a to, PC. But... I have to look into that, because I think I actually got a gift card a couple of years ago and invested in just a straight-up Photoshop mobile, so mm-hmm. I have access to that as well. That's very, very useful, especially if you're just... Or um, say you take a photo of a band, and, and they're going to use it for promo. Like yeah, You're you more likely to get it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It happens. I've had... Uh, couple of bands this year some of my favorite bands have gone and take photos and and next thing you know i see it as a cover picture yeah and a couple of my uh, phone photos yeah have ended up being album covers it's a good feeling and I'm oh amazed. album covers yeah like i've used a couple of mine for album covers cool. and it's amazing like to see how high resolution they can be you mm-hmm. know? like they don't break up and whatnot when yeah. you see them digitally so it's amazing iphones just phones in general come such a long way i just having a cell phone 10 years ago the nokia brick yeah. trying to download porn on that and you just get like a little <laughs> pixelated you know like yeah. half uh, half guts like ah oh. i still remember a time where if you wanted to text you like used to know how many times you had yeah. to press each alphanumeric key to yeah like go down and get, be good on your space button game and old people still use those i know man. you know I'm like yeah. how do you do that man upgrade i it can't took, use that fancy phone it took my pops forever to like be converted into the iphone <laughs> yeah world. Yeah. It's ridiculous. He was proud of his flip. Like, 
the late 2010s. You send him a picture. You, what, you send a caption. <laughs> like, I didn't get the picture. Like, yeah, man, come on. Exactly. Dude. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's too much data for my phone. <laughs> yeah. I'm still using minutes here. <laughs> come on. It's bullshit. Yeah, man. Um, well, I'm going to let you go. Um, I'm going to definitely ask you to give me some of your music. Cool. Uh, whatever. Pick a song or two songs. Send me two. Yeah. Your favorite. I might be able to squeeze both of them in. I might be, do one before, one after your interview. Awesome. Um, but either way, I'll, I'll send you a link. So when the episode's out and you'll be blended in with all these other great bands and Very cool. whenever um, we get some more time down the road I like to have you featured full on full hour yeah that'd be fun you. man awesome, yeah we man. can definitely sit down and talk about whatever you cool, know man. And, uh, yeah I'll try to think of my best two songs to man. share in the meantime <laughs> I know it's hard you probably got a catalog but I do have a bit whatever, of a catalog I guess whatever you think is yeah I'll uh, probably pick something old and something new there you know? go that's yeah. perfect Yeah, awesome so. man It'll be fun. All it's right. always fun trying to decide like what's going to represent me this time. Yeah, what feels the best? What, what gets <laughs> yeah. the best crowd response or just what feels the best? Maybe something you're just most proud of yeah. in general. Well, yeah, I mean, the music's all there. As well as being like re- heavily referential and stuff, mm-hmm. it's also deeply personal. So, like, it all kind of depends where I'm at and, like, you know, whether I'm feeling nostalgic or, like, forward thinking or mm-hmm. whatever. So angry. it'll be yeah. <laughs> some, sometimes angry, you know. Hey uh, man, that makes great. I manage art. my anger pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to think I'm a little on the zen side. Of well, things. yeah, as long as it's not violent anger and it's more just communicative anger. Perfect, perfect. Right. Yes, yeah, channeled mm-hmm. and hopefully constructively. Yeah, constructively. For sure. And then we'll uh, constructively. I'm gonna stick with that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, dude, so Thank much. You. Yeah, it's I really look good forward. to meet you, and I look forward to seeing your set. Hopefully, I'm in there. I'm gonna try to squeeze another half hour yeah, in, I and then head back in. Totally for understand. You're gonna be busy, but yeah, if you get to catch some, awesome. Yeah. And if not, I'll be sharing with you. So awesome. Yeah, and if not today, in the future. Awesome, dude. <laughs> yes, All right. Me. Thank you for having. Me. Let's head back in. Cool. All right, you guys. That was Chief in the Doomsday Device. I'm gonna have some links to his stuff here in the show notes. He's got a couple videos and tons of music at chief in the doomsday device.bandcamp.com. He's also got his own website, chief in the doomsday device.com. Our next guest is Walker Wade. He's lived a little bit everywhere, but for the most part, he's he's a he's a Texas implant. And He's a really funny guy, kind of awkward. I, I enjoyed sitting and talking with him because uh, I, I relate to weirdos. I hope you're okay with that, Walker. You're a weirdo, and that's cool, man. I'm, uh, I'm digging your, your weirdness for sure. The interview was a lot of fun, and he came back later on and played a couple of songs. We, we tried to, to do the best we could to record them with the mics that we had. I'm going to do a little bit of mastering on them, obviously, but... Don't um, don't overlook the awesomeness of these songs, as crappy as the recordings are. They're really good. So, enjoy the interview. Yeah. Um, are we going? Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling, dude. Okay, cool. But go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Walker Wade. I am a musician. I live in San Marcos. Used to do student radio and stuff like that. And me and Conway are going to try to do a podcast soon. So Very cool. About what? Yeah. Uh, just, like, about the s- state of things in the world. <laughs> like, yeah. But, but, uh, uh, yeah, well, but like, uh, you know, local music, stuff like that. Yeah. Texas, we, it's called Big Trouble in Little Texas. Wow. Okay. So, because it's kind of like, that's, <laughs> yeah, well, because it's like the idea is that it's like, there's the, Texas is big, but, you know, there's like the scene. It's like uh-huh. kind of tight knit. So. Especially around here. Yeah. Yeah. So here in Austin, we everybody knows everybody. So, yeah, I don't know if you're going to put that bit about the podcast on there. Me and Conway, we recorded one like three months ago, and it's old. We got to record a new one. <laughs> We're going to release them at the same time. Uh, cause you know, that yeah. way we don't release a super dated one, but, yeah. um, do you have anything recorded? Uh, no, I'm working on a demo right now. I mean, okay. I could just play something. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah, no, that's not really a thing yet. That's like, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, I mean, it'll happen, but it's not like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, yeah, we got a podcast, you know, it's a <laughs> thing for sure. You know, it's, it's like, well, we're Conway's just... a busy dude too. Yeah, for sure. So you have to like, you have to bring it to him. <laughs> yeah, well, he yeah. I mean, he wants to do it though. So. Yeah. But anyway, uh, How, we we don't have to talk about that very much. No, it's fine, man. This is all free form. You know, West Houston. It's not very interesting. I, I'm not. I'm not. I've got a lot of feelings and stuff to write about, but like as far as my story goes, I'm just like a normal guy mm-hmm. who was born and then did stuff. <laughs> no, uh, it's not like I was like no in and out I came of rehabs. To, I came to San Marcos <laughs> with only the clothes I have on my back. Like yeah, right now. 
Yeah, but that's that's all you have now. All I came was with this Miller Lite. <laughs> yeah. I had fifteen dollars in a can of Miller Lite. Got in a boat. And from I said, Dubai. "Here I come, San Marcos." And now I'm sponsored by Miller Lite. Yeah, they they can yeah. That's Walker good. Walker Wade. I almost said my actual last name. They're just waiting on a demo. <laughs> like, come on, man. We this is like the worst sponsorship we've ever done. Like, we're really, we're really hoping for something um, to come out yeah. of this. I mean, I am recording a demo right now. Um, <laughs> it's like not. I'm doing it on my internal mic on my mm-hmm. computer. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, hey, if you need somebody to help you. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I've got an interface, and so I'm at least doing my guitar through mm-hmm. the interface. People do lo-fi on purpose a lot. I mean, mine's just like a circumstantial thing, but I mean, I don't have anything against the genre, so mm-hmm. you know. You can do some cool stuff with it. I mean, I d- I, I've just got like the dumb drum machine that comes on mm-hmm. Ableton. And, yeah. You know. I can't ever get into loops. Like that's my whole thing is if if I'm putting down a song on Ableton, I gotta do it piece by piece. I know, so it me just too. Takes forever. No, I I, I know it, that I know, but that's the only one I know how to use. Yeah, no free loops. Uh, you know, I've <laughs> like pirated everything. Mm-hmm. So like it's I've got a Mac, and so I tried to pirate free loops once, and mm-hmm. I just couldn't get it to work, and I just kind of gave up. And I was like, I know how to use Ableton. Already. I had that same situation. Uh, you know, and all I did was give myself viruses and slowed my computer down for like two months before yeah. I got. <laughs> yeah, pirating. I mean, you know. Have you ever done any? Uh, have you ever done any shopping on the dark web? You know? No, what you mean like Silk Road? Yeah. That's is that still up? I think that got taken down. Like, I'm sure it's up in some ago. form. Yeah. No, I haven't done any shopping, but I always thought that was funny. Because, uh, you know, you can go there, and it's like, you can get, like, illegal weapons yeah. and, like, illegal drugs, and they'll mm-hmm. ship it to you, like, a missile if you want, if you got oh, the money. Nice. And, like, mercenaries. Like, I've looked at it before. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's funny because... because Get out. <laughs> then, then, yeah. You hear that, Ajit? <laughs> you sniveling bitch. I hate that guy. Get out of here. They're watching Ajit you right Pai. now. I know. Do you turn your phone What's off? What's up, dude? <laughs> How's it going? Did you see that video that he, he released? Mm-mm. Oh, God. It's the cringiest thing ever. Uh, oh, just no. look it up. Just look up the Ajit Pai okay. net neutrality video. Uh, it's just like he tries to be like a meme lord. Mm-hmm. But he's like the enemy of all memes. Because, you know, net neutrality guy. You yeah. Know? Anyway. Yeah, net neutrality is a big thing right now. I'm I'm terrified for it because I don't know if that means for podcast or for like yeah, we're YouTube all or... fucked, man. It's all <laughs> fucked. It's all fucked. Trump just fired everyone on the HIV AIDS advisory board. Wow. Yeah. Now we're all gonna get AIDS again. Yeah. We it's, just got rid of AIDS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's terrible. Why would he do that? It's like it's daunting. It's like oh, I don't know. Let's kill him. I don't know. Let's kill him. <laughs> Let's kill him. Let's kill him. See, but the thing is, that doesn't even work. Nobody's even trying. You know, because Pence is next. That's why nobody I wants know. to kill him. It's I know. Like... And then, okay, well, we can kill Pence, but we'll, then... We'll keep the clown. But then what happens when we kill Pence? We get Paul yeah. Ryan. Yeah. When we kill Paul Ryan... Well, he doesn't deserve to get killed. Paul, Paul Ryan is just misguided. Yeah. He's not... Well, he might be. I don't know. I, he's know, got. He's, he looks like a handsome fellow. He's got an agenda <laughs> geared towards evil. There's no doubt. He's a... Uh, yeah. He's, he seems a wolf like... in sheep's clothing. So, so should we talk about my music? I feel like Sh- sure, <laughs> if you want to. Like, <laughs> I was like prepared to answer questions. I didn't know we were just gonna shoot the shit. Which I that's, don't have that's a cool format. Too. I don't. Um, I just want to get people into uh, the artist. But you know, I'm gonna play your songs. We'll, oh, we'll have your true. songs, and then uh, you know, I think it's it's just more fun to sit back and just chill and drink and smoke so, and hang out. So what what uh, what? How many times in your life do you think you've Opened a refrigerator door. A refrigerator door. Man, that's easily, easily in like the since you were born. Half a million, maybe. Half a million. Mm-hmm. That's a that seems like a high estimate, I think. But some, I don't always how know what time, I want. On average, how many times a day do you think you open a, a door, uh, a refrigerator door? Mm, I, I had kids. <laughs> Oh, so, so times times whatever I want by five, because that's how many. So people you have I take to care. open the fridge for them. Well, Why haven't you taught them how doors work? My Only my 11-year-old <laughs> knows. Hey, actually, I've got a question about that. Um, I, I would say it, it's probably about like 50,000 is what I would guess. Mm-hmm. But we don't have to get into the math of it. How did you teach your kid English? How did you manage that? I don't know how to teach it. If someone came up to me and was like, teach this yeah. guy English, I'd be like... you got to start with a <laughs> blank canvas. Babies, they're just blank canvases, man. You can teach them anything. Just by doing it. And I didn't talk to my kids like babies. I didn't go, yeah. meeny, meeny, meeny. 
communicate. Right. I always just talk to them, you know, like a normal person. And then eventually they started talking to me like normal people and telling me off and telling me what I can and can't tell them. And This is Walker Wade performing acoustically in the back of my car. Pretty cool. <laughs> this song's called Housing Crisis. It's not about the housing crisis of 2008. It's not about that. But it is kind of a pun. Because it's about my housing crisis. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start over. You know, Tell me about that. Well, I'm the interviewer now. Yeah. This is hey, welcome to the podcast, guys. I'm Walker Wade. I'm here with Chaz. Chaz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a nightmare raising kids if you don't know how to so, just completely communicate. So, so uh, I just found this kid on my back porch. Mm-hmm. He's like five. Don't adopt him. Should I? I I think I'm just gonna. Like, he's in a he's in a like a raccoon, a raccoon trap at mm-hmm. my house. Oh, and I think I'm just gonna kill him later. <laughs> well. <laughs> So, anyway, I guess I should say some stuff about my music for real. <laughs> Please do. I'm working on a demo right now. Uh, it's probably going to be about five songs. It's, like, all lo-fi. I think I mentioned that earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and my songs are just kind of, 
I feel, this feels so self indulgent, but it's like character pieces about my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, experiences. Like, yeah, yeah. And some of them are like kind of like character y, but most of them are just me. Being... Are they autobiographical or more? Yeah, uh, for the most part. I haven't really written anything this year, but the one I wrote this year uh, is kind of like I was thinking to myself, you know, if, if I'm going to get up there and say something, it should be like something that I think that the audience needs to hear. Mm hmm. And so that one is kind of more like, hey, if you think your life sucks, it's probably not that bad. Yeah. Here's a song to make you feel better. You know, so that's how that last one is. But yeah, most of them are like autobiographical in nature. They're like punk and mixed with like country and folk, which isn't that crazy. But, you know, I mm -hmm. think I got a, a nice spin on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And usually you perform solo. Do you ever have a band or is it just usually? I want a band. Mm -hmm. I've been in like five bands. Um, and I've mostly played bass in bands. I did have a band that was like, it was actually a project for school. You know, we, we played some of my songs, but whatever. It was really short lived. Uh, but yeah, I've been in bands before, but I know not for my solo stuff that I've been doing. It's just been me alone, but I want to mm -hmm. have a band. A dr a drummers are the hardest thing, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> keep one of those around. That's yeah. And I mean, I, I've been jamming with Clint Sanye from Conway the Whale, Free Kittens and Bread, Winter Fires. You know, that guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's a good drummer. I just heard yeah. some of his music. Well, he's playing bass right now. <laughs> okay. He plays bass and guitar mostly, but I've been jamming with him on drums, but he's so busy. So, you know, it, yeah, it's just hard to find people. And, mm -hmm. you know, for a while I was waiting, not, not playing solo shows, but I was just kind of like, I have to get my stuff out there somehow. And if I'm going to have to do it alone... Then I'm gonna do it alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, being one person doesn't stop you from doing anything nowadays, right? which is so true, great. True. Yeah. Um, Not that it really ever has, but I mean, the the amount of communication we have and, and the amount of venues that accept it are are far greater. Just. Yeah, that's true, and I've I just really want to get out there, and I, mm -hmm. I I just need a band. I I just need high energy energy drums to like make my stuff really slam. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Because like, well, that's, you know, I just want to get up there and play for 25 minutes and then be like, I hope you enjoyed it. Here's, it's just like an explosion of emotion and then mm -hmm. it's over. That's kind of what I want to do. But, I, well, I guess that is what I'm doing. But, but. You hear it all in your head at least, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you definitely have the tempo down. Right. You know? Right. Very fast. Mm -hmm. Very punk. Mm hmm What kind of punk influences do you have? Do you oh, know? I mean, you know, like Jeff Rosenstock, Bomb the Amazing Industry, mm -hmm. uh, it depends on what I'm listening to at the time, but it's like, you know, I'm influenced by, like, less than Jake in some ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't really write ska, but, yeah. you know, like, melodies. Just the tempos yeah, and the melodies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, like, Laura Stevenson's good, but I'm also influenced by, like, Ryan Bingham a little bit. From, who's Ryan Bingham? Ryan Bingham. He's, he's a uh, Texas country artist. He's okay. from West Texas. Do you remember that movie with Jeff Bridges a few months, a few years ago? It was, he was, like, a country musician? Yeah, um... Yeah, uh, Ryan Bingham, he wrote a lot of the music for that. That's not one of my main influences. He's in that movie, isn't he? Yeah, like yeah, he's, as a cameo. He's, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the more successful guy, I think, that uh, Bridges is competing oh, no, with in that movie. No, no, I don't think he's... He's just, like, in the background, like, smoking a J. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I don't think he's a character. I haven't seen it, so I don't really know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know. I wish it could be more profound. I guess, like, one of the more, like, nuanced aspects of the stuff I write... It's kind of like the balance between like suffering and whimsy. That's why I might like have a song that sounds uh, energetic and fun, you know, but uh, the lyrics are not, you know, positive, mm -hmm. like ne really negative lyrics. <clears throat> uh, and I know that's a thing that people do. Like Andrew Jackson Jihad does that all the mm -hmm. time. Well, but, subjective. Your yeah. negativity could turn somebody else's positivity right. on. Right. Yeah. And so that's <clears throat> kind of the thing. And I don't do it with every song, but kind of like conceptually. Uh, I kind of try to examine those things a lot, like how you can't have positive feelings without negative feelings. Mm -hmm. So I'm expressing negative feelings in a positive way. That's kind of what I'm trying to do yeah. a lot of times with it. That said, I mean, I've written some hardcore punk songs too, and that's like mm -hmm. the exact opposite of what I'm saying. But Any sort of like a... You know, but I don't really play them in this act. Okay. Yeah. Like so my solo act. Your solo act is basically, like you said, it's, it's sort of a... Your narcissism mixed with your uh, more like neuroticism. Your experience, okay. Yeah. But nothing uh, I'm, political or any anything like that. Influential. Yeah, from... I mean, I've tried to do that, and I just I don't know. I wrote a song about 
killing Donald Trump once, but I didn't. I don't ever play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah, it, it's dangerous because. Uh, well, and that's the thing is, is the I, MAGA I don't, people are everywhere. I don't right? actually want to promote violence either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's all, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, disclaimer. I know I said all that stuff about killing mm-hmm. Trump, but no, that's not the answer. I don't. I don't yeah. support that stuff. It's I don't think a, any of the people that listen to this podcast <laughs> take anything that I say seriously. First of all, so I don't think anybody's gonna right. Like, figure out what to do with their five-year-old in a raccoon cage and do exactly I don't I don't think anybody's gonna do I think they're gonna let him free which like they should do if a five-year-old comes to your back porch let him in give him yeah. some food <laughs> like, you know like, that's the real don't give him anything just don't answer the door if you see him I, unless he's bleeding <laughs> don't answer I still door. disagree <laughs> I think you should let the kid in and ask him what's going on yeah at least call the parents. All right, we'll we'll settle. Check to see if they have a tag. <laughs> if the ears clipped. <laughs> yeah. Or they're They've chipped. They got like one of those yellow ear tags. <laughs> yeah. They got a green tattoo, like a cat behind their hair. Yeah. Or a barcode on the back of their head. Or yeah. Something like a tattoo. <laughs> okay, if the kid has a barcode on the back of his head, and he's five. Rescue him. That's that's somebody I want. To I would think. say don't let that kid in because he has like telekinetic abilities that he hasn't figured out how to use yet. Yeah. Don't get on his bad so, side. Like, yeah, it'll be one of those things where you accidentally startle him in the night and then he just explodes <laughs> your body. <laughs> it's not what he meant to do, but... And you end up in the upside down. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, awesome, man. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I'm going to get you get with you in a little bit and we'll record a song back here. Or cool. two. Well, walk away at everybody. And a train. And a train. <laughs> big, you big... <laughs> Big Short is also a great movie, nice. which is actually about the Heisen crisis really? of 2008. I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's great. It's like uh, Wolf of Wall Street, but mm-hmm. with a conscience. Danny DeVito, right? Nah. Oh, okay. It's got like Steve Carell oh, that's and like, Christian Slater. It's <laughs> 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 two different eras. <laughs> it's like not even close. Yeah. Have you seen that movie, Pootie Tang? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What else you got? I think... I think I should play that one. Okay. Remember that one from earlier? I do, yeah. I'm thinking uh, maybe I can play one. Nah, this one's got the best best lyrics. I'll play this one. Because, like, it's a podcast. They're going to be listening to the words, you know. Yeah, most likely. Anyway, it goes... I hate Trump. I hate Trump. I hate Trump. He's a bad guy. I really don't like him at all. Uh, thanks. Thank you. It yeah. was very pleasure being on. We have time for one more. Understand, and I don't know anything about you. I just want to get in your head because you're already in mine. Oh, so scream and shout and say all these things that make me doubt myself. Oh, scream and shout and say all these things that send me straight to hell. Oh, scream and shout and say all these things that make me doubt myself. Oh, scream and shout and say all these things that send me straight to hell. And I don't know anything at all. to hear them. So pull us on down with you. Pull us into the pit. Bambivalence. Oh, ambivalence. Oh, so scream and 
شب زیانی سنگه میگم دم اصل اوس کی من شب زیانی سنگه send me straight to hell اوس کی من شب زیانی سنگه میگم دم اصل اوس کی من شب زیانی سنگه send me straight to hell and i don't know anything at all i just want to understand something yeah oh, i wish insecurity was an attractive trait oh, why have i been condemned to this neurotic fate oh, i wish i was a person that this world could understand How can I figure out their secrets and learn of their plans when everyone around me is borderline insane? What should I expect when I'm exactly the same? I'm not normal by any means. So if you are, you're better off not associating with me. Send me straight to hell. Oh, scream and shout and say all these things that make me doubt myself. Oh, scream and shout and say all these things that send me straight to hell. Beautiful. Thanks. That's about the uh, the evangelist on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I got one more bonus song for okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> It's only like a minute. <laughs> I have an overwhelming fear of roaches. It might actually be a phobia. Don't know. I'm so afraid. It's completely irrational. But even when I know this, when I try to step on one, it always freaks me out. That it freaks me out and freaks me out and freaks me out. A roach can live a week without its head, but you can't. Dude, I share that. <laughs> I share that irrational fear of roaches. Right. I figured I'd throw a bonus one on the end. <laughs> I, that one really hit a home for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, not to be too self-indulgent no. or anything, but. Walk away, everybody. Okay. My next guest is a photographer. He's from Los Angeles. He lives in San Marcos currently. Uh, he explains how he got here and everything in this interview. He's one of my favorite photographers out here in the Hill Country and Texas um, in general. He's just uh, He's got an eye for the beauty of people uh, and um, also some, some kind of forgotten places. As well, he's creator of the Martian Chronicle, which is available on Facebook. I will be posting the photos that he takes along with any write-ups that he produces as well on the Instagram for Trial by Error. If, if it's available on Facebook, I will be doing that as well. I'm a little more active on Facebook only because I'm really trying to engage. I kind of understand that it's not really... Uh, conducive to to exclude myself from such a big market i guess it's it's you know for for me personally i don't really get any use out of facebook but i can understand getting other bands attention sharing posts and and sharing live shows and up and coming albums stuff like that so i'm doing it for you guys really <laughs> uh but yeah like i said let's let's get to the interview here with chris All right, I'm sitting in my car outside of Valentino's Pizza. 
with a very awesome and passionate photographer, Christopher Cordoza from uh, Austin, right? Uh, actually, originally California, but I live here in San Marcos. But I okay. Yeah, I pretty much cover everything from here to there. <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw you was, saw you shooting, was at Head for the Hills. Head for the Hills. Yeah. And um, you were up on stage and you were hopping around everywhere and... I was like, this guy's going to have some fucking photos, because you were everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere I was, you were. Yeah. And so, that was really cool. And we, we've seen each other since, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. in Utopia. Yeah, we camped next to each other. Camp right next to by, each other. By fate, right next to each other. <laughs> that was wild. Right? Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> awesome, dude. I got a little messed up that night, uh, or the, the second night. I don't do, you know, I'll smoke pot occasionally. Yeah. Uh, I don't drink very much, but I got to hold some really awesome acid, and I was fucking ball in that night it there was, was a awesome few kind of flying about that night uh, yeah i i you want well, you already know i don't drink so yeah <laughs> everything else i have to refrain from just mm -hmm. you know but uh but it's kind of good going into an event like that everyone can have fun i enjoy when people have fun and my thing is you know being coherent and being yeah. able to focus on what it is i need to focus on photography is is not to be taken lightly if you're doing it seriously because yeah if you're in the state of mind I was, I, I didn't know if my pictures were coming out. I wasn't looking at the screen. I was sweating, and I was nervous every time I got in front of people, whereas normally I'm very conscious. I'm, yeah. I don't care. I'm there to do my job or whatever. But in that state of mind, I'm like, oh, am I uh, you know, interrupting somebody's view right now? Or, <laughs> you, know? you know, I get so concerned about what whatever it is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting that I get really self-conscious about, you know, if, am I going to blow the shot? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'm focused in, you know, I can't imagine kind of meandering about in the outer state of mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and going, God, I just missed that. You know, because yeah. I, I stress enough, and then you get me at a wedding, then I'm on high stress level, yeah. you know, on red alert, you know, about to have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You know, so you get me on the stage, I'm a little bit more relaxed, and, and but I'm really concerned about what it is I'm trying to shoot, because... You know, I mean, really, if I had my way, I'd just kind of stay home <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all the time. But mm -hmm. I love music. I know. And I love the people. And you got an art. I mean, you, you've got a talent for an art. Well, thank you. No, I I, I love doing what I do. Man. Mm -hmm. I love it. And, you know, we were just talking before we restarted. It's about Conway, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's been, you know, he's one of those cats without a camera. Yeah. You know, he's one of those cats that's all about the scene and his passion reflects directly in the people he cares about mm -hmm. you know, the musicians he brings out the things he, he puts together you know and uh you know i've always admired that about him so i knew i didn't want to miss this tonight. he's very selfless um he really is in the sense that he'll promote the shit out of you yeah. um he'll pay you yeah. which a lot of venues like this would just i've been to a lot of venues i played a lot of shows full hour sets and i've got no money from it and right. I didn't think I was going to get paid here. He's like, hey, we made enough tonight. Here you go. Here's your kind of walked out of here with a hundred bucks after, right. you know, and I'm like, damn, man, thank he, you. He like, threw a benefit for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I had a camera destroyed about a year ago and a lot of people pulled together. They, they started to go fund me and they, under my assumed name. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then he rang me up and said, we got a benefit show going. And I showed up at that show and I was, I was drop dead amazed the amount of bands he got mm -hmm. the quality of bands he got in this little joint called mm -hmm. valentino's mm -hmm. and the amount of people that showed up yeah it was great. i love how intimate it is here yeah. it, there's two stages so you can simultaneously set up the bands are almost touching elbow to elbow but people are so accepting here it's uh um, yeah you know you know we used to have a place over here well you know the triple crown mm -hmm. and when the triple crown went that was the last of the great big dinosaur clubs here in town mm -hmm. where you can go listen to bands like you just heard, mm -hmm. you know, and you weren't too concerned about a particular uh, audience, mm -hmm. you know, so you weren't playing to them. Uh, so here it's always been kind of like when they kicked up the music again here, cause they were doing it way before me. Mm -hmm. Um, it would, I, I likened it to, inviting Led Zeppelin to play in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And bringing that audience mm -hmm. into my living room. And I'm going, you can't do that. Yeah. But it happened. Mm -hmm. And that really happened. You know, you sit there the next day and you go, that happened. Yeah. That really did happen last These, night. Like Winter and Fires. Then, I mean, Winter that fucking band is, dude, talent. I dude, mean, that, that's like, mm -hmm. that's like Pink Floyd, Cigaroos, mm -hmm. 
orchestrated and atmospheric and and straight into your gut you know mm -hmm. and i and and they did it right there yeah you know it, and everybody was sitting down like eating pizza <laughs> and just motionless like wow mm -hmm. you know and that that's an that's Valentino. Everybody's like poised, waiting to applaud. Like you know, sometimes it's like the applause is forgotten. With that band, it's like, oh my god, I can't wait! I can't wait to praise them <laughs> for what just happened. Yeah, and, you know, they made a joke. They made a joke. You go, you got, you got twenty or fifteen minutes left, mm -hmm. and they go, okay, we can do one song. Yeah. And going, Whoa! And then you saw what they did. They all kind of took a break, except for the guitar player, and and then that kind of started it. And then they all kind of just drifted back and continued on. And yeah. It was, that was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you don't, um, especially in San Marcos, like, everything is, is, I don't know, I feel like it's all kind of free form. Um, like, like you were saying, I, I never experienced a triple cr crown, but there really isn't any sort of, like, genre-specific place, but it's oh. designed for performances, whereas this right. one is set up like a restaurant with two corners of the room where you can play. Yeah, you know, and, it, it's kind of like Austin back in the old days, mm -hmm. as I understand it. Um, you know, when you get people doing their, their thing and the great thing about it is you can go from here and you have this assortment of bands i mean you had winter fire mm -hmm. this real atmospheric prog kind of i you can't describe them mm -hmm. and now you have chief mm -hmm. you know, have you ever seen chief yeah, oh, yeah. I, I interviewed him and i haven't seen any of his stuff so we will definitely go catch the tail end of his stuff probably the last two or three songs yeah. but uh just him explaining to me where his content comes from yeah. is so organic and uh, it's not ego. It's not ego fed. No. Um, you know, he was explaining to me just his influences, and so I'm really eager to hear his set. Um, he he is one of those guys. That, he's another champion of the the local music scene. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, I, I I he kept crossing my my radar, and I'm like, who, who the hell is this guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Chief in the Doomsday Device. Yeah, and, and, but, and I thought it was kind of cool because he had these little ads where he had his body, but he had his face removed with this cartoon mask. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was kind of eerie. And I go, what is he all about? Yeah. You know, but, but he had that persona, but at the same time, he was also a champion for everything local. Mm -hmm. You know, he supported people. He showed up, you know, mm -hmm. suited up and showed up, you know. Did you know he shoots, too? Photos? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he, he's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. He didn't tell me he was a filmmaker, yeah. but he told me he's, he dabbles in the photography. And yeah, the, yeah. Uh, he was explaining to me that a couple of his uh, album covers were just iPhone photos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, we won't go on my feeling on that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, great. I mean, if you can do it on an iPhone, great. Mm -hmm. And with Chief Greg, that's yeah. his name, Greg. Greg's an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not a person out here really I don't not care for. So uh, everyone has their own niche, as I'm sure people see me do, and you know, everyone they support one another. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, it's funny. Um, when you, your first, um, perception, like you walk in here and you just think like a bunch of hipsters, you know? Um, but the more you get to know people, uh, I mean, I don't have that bias. A lot of people mistake me for a hipster, but when you start to meet these people, their characters, every single one of them, they are. and every single one of them they has, are. yeah, they're, yeah. They, they have well, a talent. You get, you get the local guys that, that, that hang out and frequent Valentino's and, you know, I could be a bit biased and go, well, that's kind of like the rock bottom string band g gang or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they're all eclectic and they all have personalities. And that's the marvelous thing about them is, is that they're fun, mm -hmm. you know. And, and yeah, you get the, the guy that looks like the unassuming hipster, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it turns out he's just a weirdo like the rest of us. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. he's just got his own story and wears what the fuck he wants to wear and does right. Yeah, I love it, man. San Marcos is such a good place. Always has been. I've yeah. always loved the energy here in San Marcos. In Austin, you get a little bit, uh, you have to mingle with a lot of different types of uh, yeah. crowds. I mean, there's some really serious people and some kind of scary people on, on 6th Street. Yeah, you no, know? no. I, I, some pimps yeah. on, on 6th Street. I mean, you know, you don't get that here. Everybody's real laid back here. Everybody's yeah, it, it's earth. not that, you know, when I, when I went in there, when I first came to Texas, it wasn't what I heard or what i thought it was going to be mm -hmm. it reminded me of la yeah but the only difference between it and la was it was a lot cooler mm -hmm. a lot more laid back, cleaner cleaner mm -hmm. you know and you know there wasn't that and i'm sure it's there as it is anywhere there wasn't the the overlayer of you could just smell that vibe of dope mm -hmm. you know going around 
you know, everyone had a mission and everyone mm -hmm. wanted to accomplish music. So that's what I got out of Austin. You know, but there was that feeling of when you went into a club, everyone was kind of standing a little bit towards the rear, kind of checking you out as far as music goes and, and waiting for that safe moment to move forward. Or by here, they're already right there in, mm -hmm. you know, the band member's face, mm -hmm. you know, whether you like them or not. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, the mosh pit still rains out yep, here. Yeah, definitely. And people are still throwing each other. I here. love Mohawks. Oh. The stage at Mohawks, you can yeah. be up on that upper terrace. Yeah, on the upper terrace. You get really close and then come down and crowd yeah. surf off the stage. Like, Mohawks are great. Place. It is, it really is. is. I saw the Desaparecidos there. Oh, did you? And, um... They uh, so so glows open for them, and Ooh, so there was a lot of stage diving and right and you know all the people who didn't want to be up front they had that great little level at the right. back but everybody that wanted to be up front was so tight packed it felt so cool man like see and we we it's a great we, little we place we still have some of that here and you mm -hmm. know but but they're getting spaced out and mm -hmm. far wide and in between that's why you know you have like buzz mill here and you have a buzz mill out in austin too I, i'm from bandera okay well mm -hmm. you know out in austin there's a there's Mountain a buzz sticks. mill and and you know you, you you get in these little pockets of humanity and and they're trying to expand out over here and uh you know we're trying to they're trying to bring more places that musicians can play at it's a college town what happened to Buzz Mill? Is that more of an outside thing or what? Yeah, and tonight, for example, mm -hmm. all this was supposed to be there. Yeah. The weather, mm -hmm. and I think the heavens above, uh, they go, well, it might be a bad <laughs> idea to have... And hadn't they, they hadn't been doing live music here for a while, right? I mean, no. it's kind of been on a little hiatus. Not that it was permanently... No, well... It depends on who you talk to. I mean, yeah. I'm out in it all the time, so it's always mm -hmm. there. I no, just, I'm saying here, particularly in, in Valentina's. Valentina's? Mm -hmm. I hear different things. I don't yeah. know. I don't I, me know. too. It's sort of rumors, um, and I'm not here, so I don't it, know. It kind of just died down a little bit, and I think they're kind of resurging it mm -hmm. again. Uh, it's under new ownership. Oh, okay. So, okay. you know, um, I could go on with a bunch of rumors. It's just hearsay, but I'd <laughs> yeah. rather not. Yeah, well, you know? we don't want to spread them. So, you know, the, the hope for tonight, I think, is... I hear the owner's super cool. And I hope so. <laughs> I haven't met him yet. I haven't met him. Yeah, I mean, I I really have heard that. I hear he's a really cool dude. He's really business business oriented. So yeah. maybe th those decisions were just based off of good business maneuvers. But hey, we're here right now yeah. having this really cool show. So yeah, I hope hope tonight ends up really good for him. Or you know, it, you know, Henry and uh, Miles from Head for the Hills. They, you know, they own Kiva over there. Okay. And uh, so you know mm -hmm. that they, they you know. And Miles and Henry, of course, they created Head for the Hills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so their big thing is, well, it's kind of cool where you can have all your friends come and play and have your friends show up and mm -hmm. everyone can jam out. And you can have the hippie night, you can have the metal night and all that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you own one of these, commerce comes into play. You yeah. got to pay the bills. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you have to make sacrifices and go, well, you know, if it compares to the guy that's going to sit there for five hours and not buy anything. Mm hmm as compared to 10 guys who want to come in and have the money to purchase, mm -hmm. well, you're going to start going, well, hmm, I'm going to get some of them, too. Well, with no cover, and then you get a pitcher and a calzone, you're looking at 20 bucks. That's yeah. it. That's all you paid for a night, and that keeps this place yeah. bumping live music. Everybody could do yeah. that, yeah. you know? I do it. Let me ask you, uh, what have you heard about Head for the Hills? Because I know the, the venue they had it at last time was gorgeous. It was really awesome. But I hear that they're moving it across the highway. The people who, who okay, hosted well, that didn't want it there? As far as I know right now, Head for the Hills is not happening this year. Mm, no. That was my first year, and I loved it. I got to yeah, hang I, out with Spoonfed and oh, Randy and, and Leahy yeah. and Leahy, Leahy. R.I.P. Oh, John yeah. Dunsworth. Yeah. Oh, but, dude, to be able to just hang out the way that they allowed for that was just really fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, um, when they left Kerrville, Mm -hmm. Kerrville was idyllic, and then when they came here, there was a little bit of, uh, and then we got there, and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was a shade everywhere. Yeah. It was hot, but yeah. you were shady. You yeah, and it was just kind of like Kerrville in a way. But mm -hmm. and, and then Kerrville's still damn dusty though. That 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 yeah. the fairground or the the folk fest grounds out there is just super. The roads are dirt, and it's just like crazy dust all the time. Yeah, there was a lot of dust, <laughs> but uh, the you wind know, blows, and you're just coughing it up. I think what happened this year is they they kind of. They kind of want to get all their ducks in order mm -hmm. and, and do it well. And that's just as I understand it. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, no, we'll just take your time off. 
That's fine. I'm doing the same thing with my festival. Yeah. I do. We do a, a live event, but I, I've so far I've lost eight thousand dollars on it, and that's just me. Right. <laughs> and so my my girlfriend put in a thousand. She lost that. Right. So it's we love doing it, and yeah. we love bringing that to the hill country. But you know, when it's self funded like that, it's like we kind of rely on patrons, and if you can't bring, uh, you know, enough uh, people in and 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 pay the bill back. There's no incentive. So I've got the podcast. I'm right. still doing the same thing. I'm just spreading it out all right. year. Instead of putting 10 bands on stage for one night and having a free show, I'm putting 25 bands on a podcast all year. And that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and podcasts are important. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. You know, and I started doing a video magazine, but and that's the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Uh, the Martian Chronicle. Okay. So, you know, and because I've been covering things so, for so long. You have. I've seen a ton of your photography is way far out from, from music, too. You yeah. Know? Yeah, you yeah. know, and, I, and, I, and, and I'll put out these albums of all of what's going mm -hmm. on, and I call it the Martian Chronicle, and I have enough friends that live in New York and California mm -hmm. and England and, and go, where are they like live, or what kind of people are they? Or, mm -hmm. You know, because... You can you can admire and respect the picture, but unless you hear the music, you mm -hmm. know. And a lot of people have done a great thing and looked up the bands on YouTube and all that. So you know, the, all the Martian Chronicle is now is kind of like showing up, mm -hmm. like you are, kind of filming a little bit of it, showing people what happened last night. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what happened last night. Yeah. You know, and, and, <laughs> in case you missed it. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, if you're wondering what happened in that picture, well, here's the extension of it. Very cool. So you. Yeah. Do you take notes or do you just mental note everything and kind of... Mental note. You're coherent. Yeah. You're here. I, so. I, I wing it. You know, if I have to do an interview kind of like mm -hmm. you, I, I wing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I did basic journalism 1A. Mm -hmm. I did know. photo journalism in yeah. high school. And fell, fell in love with photography, though. Yeah. I just remember one thing from like two semesters, who, what, when, where. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. You know, it's okay, I remember that and that's it. Mine was negative space and uh, contrast. Right. Those two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know... <laughs> Busted two cameras. One's mm -hmm. better suited for video. I almost busted my camera out, and I saw you shooting, and I thought, all right, you got it covered. I walked, covered. In, I walked into a mailstorm of photographers. <laughs> really? Yeah, we, we got Denise Cathy in there, mm -hmm. the, the local newspaper photographer. Oh, cool. Um, and some new kid who's new on the block, mm -hmm. uh, the young black gentleman with the funny Elmer Fudd hat. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, Deontay. <laughs> Really nice guy. He's really passionate about seeing himself. Cool. You know, so. Well, um, there's, there definitely doesn't have to be a shortage. And there's, you know, everybody's got their own feed. You know, the one thing about <laughs> pictures is, is, is every picture tells a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the only one telling a story. Yeah. You know. Well, let's leave it at that, dude. Let's go catch Chief Set. Right, I'm really right curious. Let's do that. Dude, thanks thank, for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Brother. Yeah. As I'm sure Good talking to you, Chris. Good talking to you, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's our man, Christopher Paul Cordoza. C Paul C Photography on Instagram. You can check out a ton of his stuff there. If you go to the Trial by Air Instagram, I've also tagged him in the pictures he took of Conway the Whale. And and some other great ones. So start there. All right. Uh, right after him, I have 36-inch wheels, who were actually not on the bill that night, but were hanging around. And, of course, Justin Conway said, you should talk to these guys. So they're really fun. Uh, I put a couple of their songs in here. They're definitely, I, I want to do a full feature with them. They said they're down, and we might get an exclusive performance from them. So pay attention. You will meet 36-inch wheels again. But here's the interview. Well, I'm kind of Plus, I'm pretty warm direction. right here, too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get cold after 15. That's why I'm only doing 15 minutes. We'll freeze to death out here. Yeah. Ooh, I'm uh, yet. Yeah, this is I camp in, in here though. Like when I go all over, I travel all yeah. over. We just lay the seats down. My girlfriend and I. We put a food time mattress back mm -hmm. here and fuck camping, dude. Because yeah. bears, bears, that's why. Yeah, no <laughs> bears, bears and wolves. I bears have a hard time biting through your car than they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I've been to a couple uh, campsites, man, where I'm like, hey, babe, this is a good place to set up, and I get out and I hear, oh, I'm like, no, no. we'll just we'll <laughs> yeah. I keep the tent packed. We'll, we'll stay in here. Yeah, All I right. still haven't actually camped anywhere with bears. It's I have. <laughs> yeah, Colorado, Wyoming, yep, yep. Uh, Utah. Well, not, not California. Your food in a different tree. Mm -hmm. uh, never done that. Put it in the, the uh, steel box. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the things. 
All right, you guys, so introduce yourselves. Well, we're 36-inch wheels, but mm -hmm. actually two out of five of us because mm -hmm. this car's small. Yeah. <laughs> but, the other uh, guy just disappeared. Yeah, the other guy just disappeared. <laughs> Reese is MIA. He Reese? went to another place. Yeah, he imploded into another imploded. dimension. <laughs> yep. He left his car here and walked to the Kiva. Well, that's David. He's the banjo player. Hello. Okay. And uh, I'm Olus, the drummer, percussion, washboard, yeller thing mm -hmm. second least important the hype man second oh yeah. yeah second least important <laughs> yeah who needs a drummer that, no. that's definitely not the hardest asset to no, acquire no, i'm not the backbone of the music <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, how long you no guys pressure. been together uh 36 years has been going about three years no now. as a couple oh as a couple uh, yeah no uh, forever forever <laughs> we were destined to be together we just knew we just knew yeah but no 36 mm -hmm. we've been uh been three years now uh we started just as a busking band. It mm -hmm. was just acoustic instruments. I had a washboard, and we'd just yell on street corners, make up money for beer. Yeah. And that's where it started. Make some money on the street corner, uh, oh, Yeah, no, we, we did enough to get enough beer to get us drunk and, like, sit around in a sweat lodge on Hilliard. Mm -hmm. Hams used mm -hmm. to cost 666. Yeah, it used to be sponsored by Hams, except <laughs> they didn't know about it. <laughs> Fueled by Hams, at least. Yeah. And sometimes it pans out. Sometimes, yeah. but you know, ultimately a hams promotional thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you just form an addiction. Hey, PBR. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call it addiction. Yeah, you know. Sponsored. Oh uh, sponsored. We're sponsored. Not the right guys. kind of sponsored, but we're sponsored. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to clean up anytime soon. Yeah. Hey, Lone Star. Yeah. I drink your beer all the time. Hey, Shit, PBR, National Beer of Wisconsin. Yeah. And, and PBR is, like, literally the only light beer you can find in, like, Oregon, because everything is IPA. Yeah, I thought yeah. That was so funny. Y'all ever been to Oregon? Oh, no, yeah. No, 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 I haven't, yep. but I know a lot of people. I can't drink IPAs, man. I they know, me either. Hot, so I, I, was, I got hooked on Paps up there. <laughs> it's, nice. like, the only beer I could drink. I grew up in Wisconsin. That's mm -hmm. where my history with it began. Yeah. Yeah, they taught me how to drink. <laughs> yeah, and Whis the value of cheese. Oh, yeah. and the value of cheese—that's mm -hmm. no joke. Cheese, whiskey, and brutality. Cheese curds mm -hmm. are actually a Wisconsin. form of currency there. Yeah, no, you can <laughs> you can buy a house. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Eight blocks of cheese, yeah. <laughs> yeah but don't you know? <laughs> don't you know? I uh, so the show Fargo. I could get into the show, but I couldn't finish the movie. Oh, really? I couldn't. Man, it, I love William H. Macy, but I wanted to punch him the entire time. <laughs> of course. That's, that's why that character works. <laughs> I, I could not get through it, man. Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was a good movie. It's, you know, like any other Coen Brothers mm -hmm. movie, it just takes a kind of while for everything to fester and simmer to the point where it's like, yeah. oh, all the real plot developments happened, like, <laughs> that was one of those movies I kept coming back to. Like, I tried three different times to watch it. And one time I was on a lot of drugs. The other time there was a party mm -hmm. going on. And now the fourth time around, I can't get into it. It's like, <laughs> I can't, like I've literally been an hour into it, and I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. Click. Yeah, yeah, we'll try living up there. <laughs> Holy shit. That's why I couldn't do it, because I'm like, this... I have friends in actual Fargo. These people are here, like, <laughs> right just, now. They're real. And they're... They, where are they? Like, man. They're, they still exist, and that movie was made in the 90s. But I think Wisconsin actually has, like, the record for uh, um, serial killers. Mm. Like, the most serial killers have come from and have done things in Wisconsin. It's only 32 degrees right now, and I kind of want to kill people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, imagine Just to wear their for... skin for a jacket. <laughs> yeah, right? man, I mean, that's about it. <laughs> Until that gets cold. Kill somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> this is only one night in Central Texas. They only imagine have living up, there up for six months. <laughs> Oh, I actually do have a really like lofty idea, like dream album, and be uh, like going up into the Yukon even, and outfitting a cabin with all of the sound equipment that we need, all the gear, all the food, all the booze, all the drugs, all mm -hmm. the things, uh, and then just the band, like an engineer and like one other person, and just get wintered in just get mm -hmm. snowed in for like eight months oh jesus you can't leave <laughs> oh, wow. eight months sounds like a long time it'd be yeah. such a brutal album one it'd outfit so... you know oh like, yeah you know you got one you got one pair we'd of be socks known as that band on new york times they'd be like yeah they tried to win her in and they all murdered each other yep, they all mm -hmm. just killed each other one the album is amazing the bassist ate the drummer's brain <laughs> if you do that let me know i want to do the documentary right on, on that one Hell yeah. well see like without all the murder and stuff like say we actually made it through i'd love to juxtapose that album with like hey here we're on a beach resort now mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. you know this is completely <laughs> different sound and no, no, there's no we would stress not get or anything mentality. done on a beach are you serious <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know it's nice to speculate it's fun to think 
you have like a, a double album in Wisconsin and you put out an EP in the Caribbean. Yeah. There's just yeah, no so. no time to focus, guys. We no, just, let's get it out there. <laughs> We're recording an album everywhere else but home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a live demo from a luau, you know. Like, <laughs> just like <laughs> <court. laughs> you hear the pig roasting and everything. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, we're just on a ship to the Orient. Yeah. Because <laughs> people still call it the Orient, right? I don't know. That, that sounds racist. The century? <laughs> <laughs> Southeast Asian. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> talking to a few guys here and, and most people are they're from here like um, the bands that i've talked to like <laughs> Sam native, Marcus, native yeah. texas so it's cool uh, well, actually all right so, culture. Uh, two, <laughs> two of the five people in this band are actually native texans mm-hmm. uh this one yep. and reese the mia imploded on himself mm-hmm. uh in a different dimension guy we should probably send out something for reese like let him know people are looking for <laughs> Smoke him signals or something. <laughs> uh, light of a flare yeah, but where are the other guys from? Uh, Acorn, our mandolin player, is from Wisconsin, where I grew up, mm-hmm. where I met him. Uh, I was born in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, so I've been bouncing around the country. Wow, from like, Death Valley to the Siberian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I've been, I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> but uh, Texas is a good happy medium. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Ryan, Ryan will claim Texan every day, but he is born in Florida. Mm-hmm. Oh well, you don't. In Florida, no. I, do you guys listen to any other podcasts like Sword and Scale or anything like that? I mean, every now and then we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got like a uh, friend band in Houston, they do their own podcast every mm-hmm. now and then. So, I mean, just small things here and there. Mm-hmm. What's it called? It's uh, man, what? was it Uncle Jesse? Uncle Jesse, no, they're out of Corpus, right? Yeah, they're out of Corpus, not Houston. I'm sorry, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's Uncle Jesse and one of his friends, I Cousin can't James. Cousin James, yeah, they're on Facebook all the time. That's cool. how I listen to them. Otherwise, I mean, we don't even have internet right yeah, now, so yeah. I'll tag them. Are elusive. I'll tag them in yeah, this one and yeah. try to get them some listens too. They're, yeah, I mean, they're a good band. Um, the band out there in Corpus is called Black Tarpoon, and they're they're a real real good band. They've been on the radio out there in Corpus a bunch. They've been on mm-hmm. like uh, Dave TV and all that stuff. So, oh. um, yeah, like, and I, I mean, they play yeah, a lot. We still got to do a Dave TV. Yeah, we still do. We've been at, offered a few times, yeah. but. Mm-hmm. They play the same kind of music that, you know, kind of that we do, which is, by the way, for the interview, we play, like, <laughs> cowpunk is what Reese likes to prefer it. Mm-hmm. I like punk trash country. grass. I mean, it's we're not really bluegrass. We're a little more punk and a little mm-hmm. more country, but, you know, trash grass always sounded nice to me. Heck, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, as a banjo player, it's I like all to say, the same. I like we to also say, smoked trash uh, grass at one time. <laughs> yeah, right? Right, right. <laughs> no, I like to say we took the O out of country and sing in the key of fuck you. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's your logo. It's your sticker. Yeah, yeah, we have. We have no, <laughs> I mean, moms. Yeah. actually, we have. A, we have our shirts that say "Fuck you, we love you." Nice. Uh, it's kind of our motto. What's the? Um, there's a band from Austin that I feel like you guys probably would have played with by now. Um, they have whiskey in their whiskey name. Whiskey shivers. No, no. Nope. 
the other band. Whiskey Myers. Nope. nope. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Name all the whiskey bands you know. Uh, they're, they're kind of a novel group, though. They, they kind of remind me of uh, the, the Beaumonts. Nuts. I used to play with the Whiskey Shivers. They got really famous, and now they're on Pitch Perfect 3. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> yeah they're wow. insane right now. It's just crazy how everything just kind of comes back around. Even if you're on Pitch Perfect, you're still playing Spider Room. Oh, or spider yeah, all the time. Yeah, I like, mean, yeah, you can be as famous as you want, but they'll still be there at the Mohawk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, fucking love it, dude. Yeah. Austin's such dude, a great... Dude, if Triple Crown still existed, it didn't matter how big anyone got, you'd still come to Triple Crown. Yeah, Triple mm-hmm. Crown was a big place down here for a long time. I never got to go there, but was... I hear nothing but awesome yeah. things you about it. You could smoke in it. It was mm-hmm. really cool. Actually, it was really shitty. Like, it'd be so <laughs> smoked up. <laughs> no, it gets so claustrophobic in yeah, there. Yeah, it gets so smoked up. You couldn't really see the fan bar. from the stage. Like, dude, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> really little bar with a really huge sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well over fire code every single time. Uh-huh. Every <laughs> Have you guys ever played here? Uh, yeah, uh, I, oh, used yeah. To, we, I mean, uh, I we've used all to work here. here. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we've all been through Valentino's. Mm-hmm. Valentino's actually, is a uh, spot in San Thirty Six Inch Wheels kind of resurged the music here, the live mm-hmm. music stuff. Because for a while there was a BMI thing that came through, like you can't mm-hmm. play covers and junk like that. Like they just ran through all the town, wow. and so like you Fuck know BMI. Yeah, no, it sucked. <laughs> uh, but then yeah, like when I was working here, uh, Reese was working here, and our buddy Sean Dunlap was working here, and we all just like. Kind of just, hey, we need something. Mm-hmm. Something has to happen. And we started doing it. And, like, actually, tonight's one of the bigger nights that I've seen. Well, in, in a while. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it kind of died down there for a bit when we all left. New management. Yeah. New management. That mm-hmm. and uh, we can't pay the beers and or bands and beer anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Already proven that one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, drink no, their we... weight in beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to be, man. Come up, we'd get everybody a picture mm-hmm. of that band. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, Lord. yeah, we, we, like, almost, we just got this keg tonight. Like, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck? Yeah, literally, that was it. <laughs> yeah, no, that was how we would roll. It was like, we were kind of like a band in residency. Like, we'd play every other week for, it was probably a solid three, four months. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, like, some of those, like, we were past fire code here. Mm-hmm. Like, just, you couldn't shift through anybody. And you've seen it, the it, stages in there. It's horrible. Oh, yeah. yeah it does. When you got a fucking seven piece band. But you band. can also see the fire marshal coming in and block him. <laughs> you recognize him, like, just announce it. He's coming! He and looks the, like an authority. <laughs> let's not let him in. The crazy Everybody thing, out the back. The crazy thing for me was the one night that I missed a show. I was in Wisconsin for a month. And the one night that I'm not there for a 36 inch wheel show is the night our friend Andy Chang goes through the window. He changed that window. He wow. changed the hell out of that window. <laughs> wow. And like when I first heard about it, I was thinking, like, oh man, it was one of those like rowdy punk nights. Some mm. kid got thrown through the window while dancing and stuff like that. Tripped over his beer. No, come to find out, there was no music playing. <laughs> Andy Chang was looking to save a guitar that was oh. sliding to fall. Actually, would have just been better off mm-hmm. le- letting it fall. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have had that much damage to it. He wound up destroying practically both of those guitars mm. and the entire big bay window. He tried window. to catch it, tripped over himself through the stairs and through the window. Yep, just. Any injuries? Oh, he got some head injuries, a nice gash in his knee. Mm. Yeah. Our friend Vito actually, like, drove him to the ER. Wow. Well, like, he got up. It was just like, whew. You know what's yeah. fucked up? That's when we weren't allowed to have beers. And that the bands couldn't yeah. be paid in beer anymore. No, he wasn't, wasn't drinking. He and wasn't he wasn't drinking. drinking. He was sober that night. <laughs> That's how it always happens, man. That's freak accidents. People yep. people know how to handle themselves. That's yep. the lesson to be learned there. Yep. You take away the vices. You put everybody in a weird state of mind. You do the wrong thing. Yeah. And by now, it's like we already know how to handle ourselves. We drive home on pitcher after pitcher. But you take it away, and it's just something's different. Yep. You know? <laughs> Ain't routine. Yeah. Yeah, it's just out of the norm. I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, Jump, no, no way I got past and mouth down Every time I give up, I'm back down So I sit right here and I get back up I'm sing some song and I give a fuck Least I'm done building your dream Dreams dead me and you So 
Work your life for your pension plan You live your life later retiring then Two weeks later, heart attack With medical bills and bills and such That pension check don't buy very much At least she got cable TV So live your life for your team device You never answer up to me these knocks Living your life on a beat up couch It's been really fun talking to you. Hell yeah, it's been a man. pleasure, man. Make sure uh, I'll. You weren't I, kidding about just talking about anything. We didn't even talk, talk about music. Nope. Good. Not to. We're, well, <laughs> hi everybody. That is Thirty Six Inch Wheels. All right, and my next guest is his name is J.C. Fury. He's been a little bit of everywhere. He's sort of a drifter, in the true sense of the word. Very intelligent person, beautiful songwriter, very charismatic and passionate and. Uh, you know, sitting across from him and, and seeing eye to eye. He's a very driven person and, and dare I say, woke. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's no music. He doesn't have any recordings. We kind of talk about that. I'd love to get him down here and record. But anyway, here's our interview. JC Fury. All right, well, we are here back in the car once again uh, with JC. JC Fury. JC Fury. Yeah, I, I play folk punk music. It's you know a singer songwriter type deal right now um you know yeah i uh, always kind of just start my show with a disclaimer uh this shit ain't pretty and uh you know <laughs> i don't i don't know if uh you know language or anything i know mm-hmm. you just interviewed you a couple whatever of 36 you want. inch wheels and you know, there's some <laughs> buddies of mine they always mm-hmm. fucking curse like a goddamn sailor goddamn <laughs> that's so, true yeah anywho um yeah it, but it seems like people when they listen to music they just want to escape yeah yeah. You know? and, and that's all well and good, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that's definitely a purpose for music. Um, it's just like when it when it becomes a marketable, you know, just a packaged product. That's when it's like no longer art, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And art always says something. Yeah. You know, at least I've always, you know, been told by art teachers or whatever. Or <laughs> just, <laughs> well, it's like, you know, uh, um, have you ever? Do you, are you familiar with the comedy of Bill Hicks? The late Bill Hicks. <clears throat> he's bit. talking about it. He's been trying to get a TV show on for years mm-hmm. and never could. And, and finally, he got one. And he, he told the producer, asked him, what's going to be in it? And he goes, well, it's going to have titties. And they go, oh, nice. I like, I like nice. where you're going, son. Gotta check fell titties. in my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you're going to do with them titties. Oh, well, they're going to jiggle. Boom, another check yeah. fell in my lap. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and how I got here and whatnot, that's one hell of a story. I won't do a whole thing, but... Um, I I was kind of just hoboing around the country for mm-hmm. several years. Home free. Yeah, yeah, home free, yeah. man. Um, you know, just hopping trains and hitchhiking and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, met a awesome lady in uh, San Francisco, of all places, mm-hmm. in the Castro. The, the cap- <laughs> capital of love. Yeah, <laughs> capital of... Um, all kinds of love. Yeah, all kinds of love. <laughs> um, and, uh, I don't know. We went around the country together and ended up in this town, and she'd been here before, so I was like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, let's go check it out. And 
you know, fell in love with it. It welcomed us in, said, you're a part mm-hmm. of us, you belong here, and we just made friends from the get-go and realized there's like-minded people, and, you know, it just kind of, um, you know, opened up opportunities for life in general, and that's, yeah. like, what this town is about, is finding these, you know, kind of, like, you know, on the edge or drifty or just, like, don't quite fit in people and just says, welcome home, build something. Yeah. It's it's definitely, San Marcos is one of the coolest places in Texas to just meet like-minded people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just me. It's obviously not because every, it's, I was talking about this with Chief. Uh, You know, you walk into a place in San Marcos and you think like, oh shit, hipsters. But then you meet them and you're like, oh, they're weirdos. Just just like me. (laughs) Appearances are not everything. (laughs) It definitely. Despite what it may seem. Yeah, it's, it's. So easy nowadays to get wrangled into a genre or a label or whatever, but uh, I think the most valued uh, form of currency we have right now is just communication. Absolutely, it's so important. Yeah, because everything else is really, it's arbitrary. I mean, money comes and goes instantaneously, it seems like. Yeah, and the value of it is completely arbitrary. mm Mm-hmm. Every new person yeah. you meet has something new to offer you that sticks around forever that helps you grow right. in some way, right. shape, or form, negative or positive, you know? Somebody, absolutely. You can you're, take somebody's negative and make it a positive. Absolutely. You, yeah. You're always learning as long as you're listening, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, that's the way I look at life is exactly what you said. I've, mm-hmm. I've had some pretty negative uh, experiences in life, mm-hmm. and I've learned to, you know, take it as that's... Um, you know, something to grow from and learn how to, you know, um, better yourself as a human being and, and better your life um, and appreciate the, you know, nicer moments, the more awesome things in life. If, you know, um, if you didn't have those harder times and, you know, it, it, it wouldn't make these you know, more positive times as special, I suppose, mm-hmm. you know, it's... But you're right, what you're, you're saying, the, you know, the harder times form you into a more appreciative person, because there's Definitely always a good... For me. Yeah, there's always something good coming, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's the way I've learned to look at it, it's like <clears> a roller coaster, like, mm-hmm. if things are this shitty now, it's gotta be pretty fucking awesome coming up next, you know, and you mm-hmm. gotta remember what it's fucking awesome, it's not gonna last forever. Yeah. You always have yeah. to anticipate that. It's, it's always yeah. seems to be that you have this amazing run, and then it's like, oh shit, when's the shit coming? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. like karma always finds a way to balance it out, yeah. you know? Yeah, of uh, yeah, it's, I'm definitely in a point in life right now where I'm, I'm feeling that like that pressure squeezing on me. Um, it's it's not one of the negative things, but you know, it's where life is uh, kind of taking hold and. Uh, you know, you gotta fucking put put in the fucking effort. <laughs> yeah. You know, I gotta you gotta work and squeeze and harder. Do all the adult <laughs> bullshit in order to uh, get by. But uh, yeah, how old are you? Feel my. I just husband. turned thirty a couple weeks awesome, ago. Man. Yeah, thirty two yeah. myself. We lived in right a good on. time before YouTube. Yeah, before yeah. The before 90s. digital porn. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> when it was magazines. magazines. Yes. <laughs> Sneak him in your backpack and school. Yes, and she- dude. The kids these days don't know how hard that was to not right? not just possess so a magazine, weird. which is hard right. to do, Any but to get off to one. Like, right. to, it's a Imagery. still image. Yeah. Nowadays, I I, I notice like I'll I'll pick up a magazine, look at I'm like some some great great imagery. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it very much, but. Uh, <laughs> So it's not quite there. I need, I need stimulation. There. Yeah, I need I need uh, movement and oh, yeah. sound and you know all that like it's yeah. weird shit. Like, I can look up all kinds of weird shit. Don't even get me started on the weird shit. Yeah, Ooh. you try that stuff once Intriguing. or twice. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's not like it's something that holds you over. Uh-huh. But it's like my I had to give it a try. Yeah. yeah. My willingness to try has led me to so many yeah. more experiences, positive yeah, think, and negative. You know. I, I think you know it just. Um, you know, it shows that you're a naturally explorative person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, anybody who's like, you know, a closet kingster, who's just <laughs> kinky in general, whether shameless about it or not, you know, it, they're an adventurous person. Mm-hmm. They like to experience life and find zest and yeah. zeal. And, zest. I like yeah, that word. Yeah. I, 
I, I do cook. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a chef by any means. I don't yeah. do real cooking. But yeah, but but the, the the value in that too is like uh, being able to cook something for your girlfriend or for oh, you know yeah. in my case for my kids. Like it's it's valuable as well. Like I don't I don't have it's to just form bring of something home. Is mm-hmm. food, you know, yeah, the, you can show somebody you love yeah. them very deeply yeah. by making them something instead of yeah. just ah, I fucking warm this up and have them eat it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, a lot of times in in this. Uh, you know, life, American lifestyle, that's all that eating becomes is mm-hmm. just grab something and consume it. And, yeah. you know, it's this whole consumer lifestyle. Or habitual that's eating. Been, yeah. Like, yeah, I only eat like hamburgers. Boredom, just eat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the same damn thing every single fucking day, mm-hmm. you know, just because it's convenient. Yep. When there's there used to be a, a reverence and a respect for, like, culinary arts mm-hmm. and, you know, just food in general. And, uh, just the appreciation of being nourished. You know that that's been taken for granted. We can yeah, because we eat so much. Yeah, and throw away so yeah. much. Yeah, I used to live off of fucking dumpster food, mm-hmm. man. If it weren't for that, I I fucking could have starved to death. <laughs> yeah, you know? I worked but, at the uh, Cheesecake Factory as yeah. a chef there, and if something the grill marks weren't forty five degrees, they would take it and throw it away right wow. in front of you. They wouldn't. Wow. They wouldn't put it in a box. They wouldn't save up the you know 15 meals that were screwed up that day. They would throw it away right in front of you. Wow. In, um, in Austin, now where there's a, a prominent homeless home. problem, Damn. you know, and I'm like, get they got they got the 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 arch out there they could go mm-hmm. donate it to. That's what I mean, dude. They like, eat a cold fucking eating, gourmet burger, right? Every fucking or night. a fucking lasagna that had burnt grill marks on the edge. Like it just the the amount of waste. That's definitely a huge, yeah. huge, huge problem yeah. in our in our society. It is shameful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it really is. There's um there really aren't enough organizations because everybody gets blocked by licensing. Like you go out and you try yeah. to do a good thing and you get fucking arrested for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it it's a deterrent. It's a crime to be mm-hmm. a true good Samaritan. You know, yeah. you, you have to get permits and permit mm-hmm. all the, hoops it's the same you thing with drug laws. Right. The only reason yeah. they're in place is because they make more money prosecuting people for exactly. those than they do taxing them. The, uh, the uh, mm-hmm. corporatized private prisons, you know, yeah. the longer someone sits in there, the more the taxpayer yeah. has to pay the uh, corporation. And they're not getting shit in there to eat the, or or right, wear or, any, right. you know, no heat, no con- controlled and climate or anything like that. I mean... Yeah, it's not, not very pretty in there. Yeah. I've never been in the penitentiary, but, you know... Even a regular county jail ain't too fun. Mm-hmm. It's, it's cold and yeah. it's miserable and boring. <laughs> it, it boring at the part. very most. <laughs> at the very the, the hardest part about it. Uh, not only are you lonely, it's not like uh, the fear or you're not eating uh, enough because it's whatever. It's the fucking boredom, man. It's yeah, so rampant. Yeah, it's especially mm. when you don't get a celly and you're just stuck for mm-hmm. who knows how long by yourself and you're just like you can't go to the library oh, cuz you God, missed you got in the day that they went the to the future, library oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah yeah i've i've got you know different stories i could pull out of there in that I, one but uh i've had a few uh serious drug arrests in my life i'm not mm-hmm. i am a very mm-hmm. open person i don't i don't mind talking about my kink i don't mind talking yeah. about my drug history my drug use anything because i feel like that's going to keep other people in the dark and you know what those yeah. it's nothing to be ashamed of Absolutely. It, those are stigmas that have been put on you by a society yeah. that doesn't give a fuck about you in the first place you know yeah, we're all a little mad around mm-hmm. here man yeah the yeah. underbelly is is less obvious but it's also um it's it's thing. why we function i mean yeah. you know we're hard working people or, yeah you know the the working class man you know Works his ass off, mm-hmm. and he deserves to either rest hard or play hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what I try and that I I hold true to that. I, mm-hmm. I work way too much, and it's not enough. Yeah, you know I'm. Yeah, you know, so it wears me out. I I feel like I'm gonna die sometimes from all the working I I do, and I can't fucking afford to fucking live. Yeah. Theoretically, yeah, especially around these areas in the yeah. in the urban areas. That's why I had to get out of Austin for that reason. I was working mm-hmm. seventy hour weeks with a really mm-hmm. good job, insurance, but in the end, it wasn't enough for me to to yeah. actually do anything more than pay bills. I couldn't eat. I could pay bills. Yeah, couldn't eat. Yeah, I'm starting to look at that right now mm-hmm. with uh, like I mentioned, life doing its life stuff. I'm uh, mm-hmm. moving from one part of town to another. Which, mm-hmm. It's an it's a cool neighborhood, lots of friends and everything, but you know, more financial bullshit so, yeah you know, i'm looking at 
at that whole like what am I gonna be able to afford let's map out my money situation it <laughs> yeah. sucks cause I'm also <laughs> trying to save to get married right the, now the imaginary money situation it's like yeah, I have it today but uh, it's not mine <laughs> it's yeah. not mine well it congratulations on your engagement yeah. yes thank by you by the way um, marriage yeah, is definitely a good doorway April 13th awesome yeah. very and, cool um, yeah excited about that um <laughs> apprehensive because of the money situation we were fine but then you know life throws a mm-hmm. rock at your face but uh you know well, let's let's take a hard right back into your music cool yeah let's do that <laughs> uh so you're set tonight what would what did that consist of it was probably a shorter set yeah right um i have played some longer ones than this uh this one uh that's it. What, what was what about your it? What was your focus when you wrote the set? Was it like, did okay. you come in here thinking like, all right, okay. I'm gonna say something to this crowd, or were you going for well, crowd blasters? A little blasters? bit, a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. I've got a lot of songs that are real like punch in the face. Uh, they they wreck me trying to you know cram them into a show mm-hmm. like especially like this. So I knew I had to drop out a lot of those ones. Mm-hmm. Um, what I decided I want to do. <clears throat> Is uh, let's see. I I uh, wanted to kind of play a little bit with like a, the New Year's theme. Um, one of the songs that I had that would have been perfect for it, I had to cut out because it just, you know, I decided on these ones better. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a song in there that's becoming well known, "Trash in the Streets." Uh, it's about being a dirty street kid. No <laughs> said. Um, you know. People are starting to know that one, so I had to throw that one in there. It's in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I played a new one called The Ladder that is very, uh, like I said on the set, is relevant uh, to the political climate of today. Um, You really find out at the end of the song, um, I'm just like, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this, Mm -hmm. all this fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) Yeah, it's it's slightly it's more uh, cohesive in the song. Obviously, I made actual <laughs> lyrics. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's uh, talks about the social ladder and you know presents a. Uh, it starts off with here's what I think about you know basically the situation. Here's how I came into my situation and why I think this way about it. Mm-hmm. And here's my calling out to. Um, you know, the people that put not just me, but everyone else there. And here's my calling out to the people that are, you know, in the song I say, in a box, you know, is, mm-hmm. you know, just the containment that has been, you know, either metaphorically or literally put around you. Um, and then the last verse is just, yeah, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you, let's fuck shit up. Yeah. Um, that's called the ladder. Uh, so you know, with the political climate today, I wanted to do stuff, a couple things like that. There was a song uh, that I mentioned to you before we started this that talks about like, uh, you know, uh, drug lo- uh, drug laws and and, and med- uh, medical care bullshit hypocrisy of the mm-hmm. you know um, the war on drugs while they're uh, you know the government sanctioned drug companies are the biggest drug mm-hmm. pushers out there the lobbyists but, um, man you can't, you can't yeah yeah the lobby you yeah. can't go over that exactly you, you can't there's just no but way but i to had fight to cut that. that one out <laughs> um, however i did play a uh, cover song that was very well known uh baby i'm an anarchist by against me okay um i tweaked the words a little bit to uh, make it relevant mm-hmm. um there's mm-hmm. a you know, a couple. It was written in the uh, W. Bush era, so you know, yeah. <laughs> I made it relevant to today. Um, and uh, well, I just started off the song with a um, song about writing freight trains, and then a little holiday ditty I wrote about being cold and homeless in the winter time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Leather Weather. Leather Weather, yeah. tough skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gotta have the just, tough skin. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you something about riding trains. Did you ever encounter any bulls? Yeah, yeah. Well, that is one of the reasons why I can't go back to uh, San Bernardino, California. They got your number, um, huh? Yeah, surprisingly <laughs> not because of this punk rock riot that I was in in 2006, <laughs> but because of trespassing on a train yard. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a sight and release ticket. Um, wow. You know, a lot of times I've gotten, you know, your tickets, or just, they just say, you know, get the fuck out of my yard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've been plenty sneaky enough to get around them. 
What's that? I mean, you're probably sleeping when they get you, right? Like you. No, just... often I'm just sitting there waiting or just being stupid getting off. Not paying attention uh, to what's going on, you know. Just to, like take it for granted. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, you gotta like poke your head up, look around. Uh-huh. Okay, coast is clear. Hop off and run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Any injuries trying to jump off? Uh, luckily nothing serious. Just That's you good. know, you got a process. Scrapes and bumps and bruises. You yeah. know, if, if the train is rolling, you know, I tuck and roll with the momentum. You know, <laughs> and, you know, you gotta know how to jog with it and, and know that. It's not too fast to fucking grab the ladder and rip your arms off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there was one time um, the train sighted out is what it's called. It stops and lets another train go. And mm-hmm. this was out in the middle of who knows where, and it was hot, so we're sitting in the shade of the car, Off, the, got off the train, sat there. Mm-hmm. And then um, it starts to pick up and move, and my road dog runs up the ladder, and I start running up the ladder, and my foot slips between the fucking rungs. Oh, fuck. And my feet is, my foot is, like, inches from the wheel picking up speed. Oh, and this shit. happens in, like, split seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, fuck my foot. And I just, like, <laughs> scamper up that ladder in a fucking instant. And, like, whew, goddamn, I am Good thing for grateful for having two feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, many this... stupid little things I'm grateful for like that. Like, A lot of those damn. stories do not end well. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I've heard. <laughs> I just finished the uh, Into the Wild book. Oh uh, man, Chris McCandless book and his encounters with the bulls and stuff. They don't show yeah. any of that uh, in the movie. I saw the movie, of course, first. Read the yeah. book, uh, but it goes into depth through his journals and stuff, meeting mm. the, the bulls. And yeah, I don't just, remember them in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It just kind of breezes through, but there's, right, it's right. far more in depth. It's more from his journal in the right. book, and uh, a lot of the a lot of the instances definitely happen, but um, they focus more on like his relationships with the people on the road, whereas the book yeah. focuses more on his independent quest. Oh, see, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, a really really quick read, by the way. It's only about that yeah. thick. Cool. Um, uh, man, I, I I think I'd probably enjoy that a little more than the movie. I, yeah. As as someone who was uh, you know living that kind of life mm-hmm. um, oh beautiful book man. there were some things like beautiful story mm-hmm. beautiful message he didn't die from but, uh, eating those potato seeds a wild potato the, he died of starvation oh, okay. he died months after that instance actually he wrote huh. about that and, and it was like so he made it through that made it for two months reality. but what happened was it those the certain foods that he was ingesting actually like put him huh. into a state uh where it blocked his his organs oh. and uh it made him lose his appetite and everything. So he actually died okay. of starvation, which is a long, horrifying process. So like in the movie, it was a forced mm-hmm. starvation through loss of appetite, yeah. but not from the seeds or berries mm-hmm. or whatever. Okay. Yeah, they actually died yeah, in his autopsy. They showed that he actually ate the right things huh. as far as that. That wasn't what killed him, but it was just his failure, his organ failure that like kind of put him right, into a state where right. he couldn't wow. ingest food anymore. Huh. See, that was one of the things mm-hmm. I... Uh, found issue with uh mm-hmm. you know the story the movie mm-hmm. was um that kid just didn't prepare well enough yeah man. i feel like he really you know, did though did he, he? he really did, did he? he really took care of himself not, the movie did not show him like yeah like, it didn't seem like he prepared well at all mm-hmm. it really made him look like oh i'm just gonna go live <laughs> yeah. in the woods yeah well there was that too and 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 a lot of people there's a lot of that in the book the the, mm. the writers actually talking about the different people who have written in and, and said, you know, because he was just an idiot and unprepared and whatever, and he knew exactly what he was facing. Mm-hmm. The reason why he did that was because he truly wanted to experience the rawness of it. Yeah, and He absolutely. knew it was, he knew it could Which kill him. Which is commendable, him. respectable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was, he had a choice. He knew he, mm-hmm. he was offered so much stuff and could have gone out there with a rifle, could have gone out there with all this right. stuff and decided to take the twenty two. Yeah. decided to take limited gear because yeah. he, he truly he wanted, wanted to experience the pioneer the primal, feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just the... Visceralness and, of it all, and he kind of knew he was gonna die out there in a way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't think he intended on coming back. Yeah, he yeah. was just uh, done with society. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. went to college, graduated college. His dad said, was fuck this shit. Kind know? of an eagle, egalitarian. I hate to say that. Like, yeah, I don't his dad was an aeronautic that. engineer and oh, okay. like tons of money and basically yeah. just. That was how his parents showed him love, were just gifts and stuff, and he's just like, oh, fuck man. this, man. Like, so, I, you know, like I need a he, real form of it. That's interesting. He grew up <clears throat> um, just amongst materialism mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and found disgust with it yeah. because he it, it didn't give him connection. It wasn't a replacement for his parents who uh, 
apparently were, uh, I guess, emotionally neglectful, it sounds like. And, it, it you know. kind of, yes and no. Uh, they, okay. they actually have interviews with them in there as mm. well and describe, you know, Chris being a really active kid and, and mm. growing up in, like, scouts and, and yeah. stuff like that. And they were active, but it wasn't, uh, it never spoke to him. He was always longing for yeah. more of yeah. a connection rather than... Exactly. Kind of a, a shooing off, give you what you want kind yeah, of feeling. Yeah, that's the thing I find interesting is mm-hmm. you realize, you know, the truth about, well, one of the major truths in in life, in the world, is that, you know, materialism will not bring you happiness. Mm-hmm. The happiness it does is, you know, fickle and fleeting. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he knew uh, the one way to true liberation was abdication Mm -hmm. um which you know you'd go back through you know um let's call it the mystical stories um (laughs) characters like you know jesus christ Mm -hmm. or uh siddhartha gautama was a a indian prince Mm -hmm. that abdicated his uh crown to search spiritual enlightenment became the buddha Mm -hmm. in case you know nobody knew what the weird name that was siddhartha for some people was required reading right 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 on thanks for thanks for chatting with me thanks for best of luck i appreciate it uh chaz yeah great to meet you you too jason we'll be in touch awesome man right see told you that guy's cool it was really fun hanging out with him and we will get a full feature with him as soon as he gets some demos recorded my next guest and final guest of the night was jason from the lost project they are sort of an alternative rock uh indie rock they have a very diverse live set as far as the different ranges of rock and roll Uh, it doesn't range too far out of that realm but i guess just the dynamics were really cool there's they're a three-piece they have a couple of items available on Bandcamp, so you just go to thelostproject.bandcamp.com. I will put some of their information in the show notes as well. Before I do the interview, let's go ahead and play one of their songs. This one is the newest song available. It's called Dream Catcher. Enjoy! <laughs>
I'm here with Jason, Jason from The Lost Project. Of The Lost Project, and you guys played a really awesome set. One of the sets I was actually able to sit down and listen. Awesome. I'm a Blink fan. Yeah? Okay, Always good, have been. Good, good. <laughs> uh, you know, I kind of, I have Plus 44 fan, Boxcar Racer fan, not so much Angels and Airwaves. Uh, we Don't Need to Whisper album. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Everything else after that was, why <laughs> Why are you doing this? I really enjoyed Boxcar Racer. I, I, yeah, I still, to the, awesome. definitely a Blink fan. I was, I, I walked in right when you guys were playing the, um, Dens Fair. is it Denseria Gary? No, it's uh, it was Don't Leave Me. Don't, don't leave, leave Me. me. All right, yeah. yeah, Don't Leave Me. <laughs> did you watch the Urethra Chronicles? Did you ever get I, into I those? Didn't, I didn't, yeah. no, I didn't. I bet you they're for free now on YouTube. Like, I went out and I'm, bought them. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. sure they, almost everything's on YouTube for free the now. The Urethra like, Chronicles. It's been out somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you, if, if not in, like, one solid piece, you can get it in parts. Uh, actually, Tom's interview, and, and Travis's too, where they talk about their musical influences, turned me on to so much punk rock. That's cool. Way better than Blink was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. we love Blink, but they they sold into the commercial For commercialized sure. side of punk, so they they lost their punk credibility. But endlessly catchy and super funny, yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, but they got me into like No Effects mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, the Descendants, you know. So kind of sent me down that road thanks to right, that yeah. that that uh, documentary. And I just finished the No Effects book on Audible, which I highly recommend. That's um, cool. I didn't even know they had one. That's cool. It's called the Hepatitis Bathtub and Other <laughs> Stories. <laughs> other Stories. I like and that. um, I think it was a. Uh, we were just listening to what is it called? I think Never Trust a Hippie. That EP mm -hmm. they put out. Mm -hmm. So good. It's just cool. They're just a really yeah. catchy band, you know. Um, and they don't give a fuck. You know? And so Which true. Is great, you know. Never trust a hippie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I love about them is their autobiographical lyrics. Like, you would think they're just joking, but they're not. Like no, they're, they're, they're pretty yeah, quiet they're, about everything. They're pretty current, too. All right, let's, let's 180 it back to okay, you. Let's go. Um, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> so how long have you guys been together as The Lost Project? Uh, as the band, we've been together for a little over seven years. Uh, my brother's a drummer. His name is Nick. And um, him and I, about eight years ago, because we did about a year of jamming before we actually started playing, we would just uh, practice at our parents' house, and we would just, just jam out, and... Um, the guy, the original bass player, he uh, he was in another band that I used to be in. Uh, we used to be in a ska band called Kevin Goes to College. <laughs> used to play a lot at Sam's Burger Joint and stuff. And um, basically, he joined the band after we started. My brother and I were jamming for a while, and um, you know, for there, we just really, really. I, I like writing music. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. like I, I want to write for bands actually. But I, you know, I had a bunch of lyrics. I was, I was hurt at the time, so I started writing, and I was like, let's. Well, let's do some of this, and so mm -hmm. we just started. And when we came out, we we would play anywhere and everywhere all the time. And you know, now a little bit you know less, but it's more planned out. Mm -hmm. You know, back yeah. then it was wherever, any moment, <laughs> house anytime. parties. Yeah, we'll do whatever, <laughs> anything. Skate park. So, yeah, we've we've done it. We've done a bunch of places, and mm -hmm. uh, it's cool. Um, you know, doing it for you know seven years. I mean, I've already been playing in a band. I guess since I was fourteen. I'm thirty now, so been doing it for more than half my life and mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's cool to see progression and I think coming into this band it was a little bit more of me understanding um, you know there's 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 a lot of ways you can go about it there's no right or wrong way just as long as you keep doing it mm -hmm. and uh, you know commit think, yeah you gotta mm -hmm. commit to it and I think a lot of it was uh, you know we had some really good uh, some really good moments where we got stuff done faster than other bands only because I had done it before, you know, putting out an EP, and mm -hmm. um, we put out quite a few albums already, so, um, you know. Awesome. It's been good. It's been a good I definitely so will, ch I, I like your sound, and I think the, for me, it's like, a lot of times I can't go to shows, I got a bunch of kids, and I do, I do surprisingly go to a lot of shows, but they're kind of like bucket list bands, mm -hmm. you know, Alt-J at Red Rocks or That's Connor cool. Oberst or whatever, like, when they come to San Antonio, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I definitely like supporting my bands on Bandcamp. Like, cool. you got albums on there, I'll buy it, I got a massive Bandcamp collection. I'm cool. trying to get Bandcamp as a sponsor, that would actually. That awesome. Yeah, yeah because I, really cool. every episode I, I bump them. That's cool. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I, it's something. it's a beautiful platform. It's yeah. it's um your lyrics are there, your merchandise is there, every link you have to all your social medias or your own website or whatever. It's all there. It's like just the go to yeah. stop. And it's not just independent bands. People think it's all just unsigned bands. No, I, it's, it's a lot everything. of bands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they'll release singles on there before they release them anywhere else. I'm a huge Aesop rock fan, and okay. he releases the singles there first all the time. That's cool. So That's I kind of know something's coming up, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. see it there. And uh, Spose and Cam Groves, and I don't know how much hip hop you listen to, but um, not too much. I mean, I do, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm not 
totally. I love Watsky and Spose, Aesop Rock. Uh, yeah, I'm always um, looking for for lyrical content. Cool. Yeah, we have our lyrics on mm-hmm. here with all of our stuff. So we have a couple EPs, a demo, full length. You know, um, and take the time to put the lyrics on there. That's important to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On all of our CDs too, we have. Uh, the last CD we did, I, we actually have a lyric book, but mm-hmm. all the other ones they have the lyrics on the and typed out or stuff. handwritten. Were they? They're uh, well, I mean, it's we got the CDs replicated, so mm-hmm. they're like barcode, shrink wrapped, all that stuff. No, so no, I mean as far as like uh, the the imagery in like when you bust it open, is it typed out lyrics or oh, we, yeah. photographs of handwritten stuff? We we typed it out. Uh, the last, or actually, uh, one of them it's cool because it's like an old typewriter font. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our first two I had that. Our last one was a little bit more composed, where it was a uh, it's kind of like typewriters. Well, I think the lyrics are very important, mm-hmm. especially because it kind of gives a person a, their own interpretation of what they you know read, and uh, you know sometimes you hear a song and you don't know what they're saying, mm-hmm. and you know and then Alt J is one of those bands. Yeah, I have no fucking idea what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like some bands don't know what they're saying either. They just go through and do it. Yeah, yeah. they kind of just, <laughs> kinda just yeah. make it up each time, maybe. I'll be singing it the wrong way for years, and I see the lyrics on like the Google lyrics thing, and I'm like, what the fuck? I did, would not think. Like, there's one lyric. It's like, um, I want to, I want to bear into you like a cat prances into a bean bag. And I mean, like, and yeah. it sounds like something completely different when they sing it. <laughs> and I almost didn't believe it. I'm like, somebody fucked up these lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> somebody did this. Somebody but you listen to it again with the right lyrics, and you're like, I'll be damned. Yeah, man. that's how they said it. That's how they articulated it. Yeah. I failed so many times. This isn't broken. In pride, it's all I have the good and the bad. So much to hold inside, a laugh to mask the sigh of old regret, just a kiss to forget. It's not like I'm just wrong, I just carry.
down. Like, do you like the Arctic Monkeys? I love them. They're like one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Um, I just think as a band, they're just they're so really well composed, mm -hmm. but lyrically too. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And you know, it just shows the struggle of uh, somebody um, kind of lost. I feel mm -hmm. finding lustful love. A lot of his songs, I feel like, are about that kind mm -hmm. of being a being out in nightlife and trying Check. to find your way with somebody or something yeah. and getting lost. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, that's what I like about them a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, but I think as a band, it's crazy how they progressed too because, you know, they, man, they started when they were teens. Mm -hmm. Super fast, super like poppy, catchy. And then it's like they are getting older. It's still pop. It's so catchy. It's so poppy, but it's like slowed down. It's more, it's just more composed, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. But I've always, I, I think they're just a really awesome band. Uh, Another band that's really uh, progressed all the time. It, any of their albums are just they just gotten more progressive actually but a little bit just more composed as well is uh, um rx bandits mm -hmm. if you've ever heard I, of them i, I haven't since i was a kid i gotta check them out oh man they're you know when they first started they were called pharmaceutical bandits they were like a third wave poppy <laughs> ska band happy go lucky and every album they've put out in well the past 15 years is just more progressive or just more it's just it's grown it's mm -hmm. just like man these guys are just getting better and better and you know, I feel like a lot of bands, it's hard for them to do that. I feel like some bands, they'll have a really great first album, second album. That's the true test. I feel like a sophomore album is like the mm -hmm. real test if a band is like really growing or not. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's like... They used... That was one of those bands mm -hmm. for me. Their first album was fucking phenomenal. You know, the second one was catchy. Third one was like, all right. Yeah, all right. Their <laughs> drum it. tracks on, on uh, I, the album, that the one with the heart on it, I don't even mm -hmm. remember. Uh, In Love and Death. Those mm -hmm. drums sound amazing. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, this is the drums sound. I mean, the songs are great. It's great, mm -hmm. but to me, I'm all, you know, I'm into like sounds and stuff. And I'm like, man, that, those drums are like the best sounding drums I've ever heard on yeah. the album. <laughs> you know, yeah, like they're, they're just a great band. That whole album was so catchy, yeah. man. Even the the hard hitting stuff like uh, Fake, you know, uh, where he comes in with that spoken word piece, you know? Dude, uh, it's like small, simple, safe price. Rise the wake, carry me with all of my regrets. <laughs> They come in with those drums, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a small cut that scabs and dries and flakes and heals. So good. <laughs> Another one, like, my favorite album of this year, hands down, was the brand new science fiction album. I have not heard it. I have not heard it. If you like brand new and you, you stuck around since the Deja Innuendo era, you know, they did The Devil and God, Rage Inside Me. And to me, that one, I don't know what it, that was... It felt like it should have been a prequel, almost. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like such a developmental album. Yeah, uh, it was just so punk, and like you barely understand it. And and it has those great songs, but this one, uh, science fiction, man, beginning to end, I don't want to turn songs. Like yeah, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, there's no good. skipping songs. Um, album, the yeah. content is incredible, dude. It starts out with an interview of a woman who's describing her dreams and it's like from like hundreds of hours of tapes and they cut it down to like the first 60 seconds of this thing and Dang. she's talking about how it like triples into her reality you know and she's like there's so much going on in there and I've listened to a ton of albums this year trying to figure out where like what people are doing where music's headed and that one they just nailed it nailed it, it is nailed okay. it what else uh, what else influenced you besides the the punk I um I was really into uh Alternative rock, a lot of bands, you know, bands you know on the radio like a, uh, you know, Sister Hazel, Matchbox mm -hmm. Twenty, uh, Dexter Freebeard, Splendor, um, The Wallflowers, Death uh, Cab for Cutie. I like them too. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't, I, I didn't really really get into them, but uh, our bass player actually had gotten me in, influenced by them. And to me, I I like really simple, catchy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like like the Beatles said it best, like you know, simplicity is genius and. You have to realize if you're playing music, you can't be too technical because most people, they don't they don't know the difference. Yeah. And if you're making your music to where it breathes, um, people can relate and hear it and really understand where you're getting at. Um, I do like you know harder stuff, progressive mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, I like simple stuff. I think that's the best that's the best formula to really get somebody to really pay attention because it's not that hard for them to listen because it breathes for them, you know. I guess that's it, man. I'll let you return, cool. and uh, we'll catch up. I think Conway just got off. Good to talk to you, and yeah, uh, best of luck. Great Shh, job man. with Thanks your set so tonight. Much, yeah, thank Lost you, Project, everybody. Check them out on Bandcamp. Do it. All right. Yeah, you heard me, Bandcamp. 
sponsor it. We're all about it. All of us. Everybody involved in this uh, podcast so far would, would totally benefit from a band camp sponsorship. Not only that, future bands would benefit because I would take that music that they give me and I would buy music through their site, which was supporting both the artist and Bandcamp. So, I mean, it's kind of a win-win. I'm not asking to get paid. I'm asking to you to invest in some of these bands. Bandcamp, step up. Step up. I will represent. All right, you guys. That right there <clears throat> is 95% of... The very first episode for season two, episode 26 in the series, we did this whole thing behind Valentino's Pizza in San Marcos, so I want to thank them for letting me post up back there and run bands in and out of your kitchen, looking like the the club dealer or something. <clears throat> and thank you to Justin Conway for for encouraging me not not only encouraging me but you know really pushing me and pulling me in, in the, the right direction with this whole thing and and setting it up for me and talking to bands for me and kind of breaking the ice there was one band that i talked to on here brother wives and we filmed about a 30 minute conversation what i'd like to do they they expressed wanting to be back on so did 36 inch wheels uh, there's a couple of other bands in San Marcos that I'd really like to talk to, and I'm going to take the studio up again uh, up there and, and have a better conversation <clears throat> with better microphones and, and stuff like that that's coming up. Uh, however, I am going to play a Brother Wives song to close out this podcast. All the music that you heard here is available on bandcamp.com. It's most of it is pay is name your price. Some of it is is ten dollars, five dollars is super cheap. If you can, you know, invest in something like that, you you have that kind of cash. I I highly recommend it. It goes in a good place and it sh it's a good way to show support. Thank you to everybody that joined us for the first season. The season two is gonna be special. I'm gonna really put my nose to the grindstone here and try to pump out as many episodes as I can, not really to create content, but just to introduce more bands. And I, I'm, you know, I'm fairly convinced that this year I'm going to be able to pull a lot of notable bands in the industry. I'm going to talk to producers. I'm going to talk to, I'm going to try to get a hold of some A&R representatives and do some shorter interviews because I know uh, it, it's kind of hard for them to, to give any sort of legal advice or anything like that. That's what they get paid for. But I would like to kind of just get a little bit of insight. So I'm trying to create some new segments. I've reached out to all the, the bands from episodes in, in the past, and I've asked them to sort of critique us and tell us what's what, what would make this thing more resourceful and entertaining at the same time. So I'm, I've the survey is out. If anybody else has any sort of comments, please follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Shoot an email, trial by error variety show at gmail.com. Go to trial by error variety show.com to see everything else. There is Patreon, there's the Wikipedia for local bands. I'm going to add a ton of bands to it. And um, other than that, that's it. I love you guys very much. Thanks for joining me once again. Please take care of each other. Hugs and kisses and, and kindness and compassion and whatever you do, follow the golden rule.